fucking wolf brigade at our back. Yes. Also, now we're rolling. Hi, everybody. We're doing another actual play. Yeah. And uh, this episode is brought to you by patrons like Ico Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kyle Denton, Mr. Flores, Soda Sun Over Two and Video Gamer Seventy Five. And if you like what we do and want to see us do more, you should consider supporting us on Patreon. Also, I did lots of mic stand adjustment in there. That was a slow one. Yeah, that had uh, that had three that had three spikes. Yeah. All right, so the audience nice. has to listen to me get my dice out while we recap. Yeah. So you're on a zeppelin. Um, which uh, I was gonna say this earlier, but I just didn't think about it because once again, it has been a couple weeks for <laughs> no real reason other than just we're busy and lazy. Yeah. And tired. Professional sleep boys. Welcome to the team. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I thought about it and I, uh, in this case, I'm, because I, what was it? I think a track that you had like at top speed, like an eight hour flight back. Um, yeah. there's no need to roll post mission fatigue. Oh, cause you okay. were in the air for like, I think it was like a two hour mission. So it was super short. Mm-hmm. Uh, so even if you failed with like a huge bonus, which cause you'd get, cause it was super short, uh, you'd automatically recover by the time you go back home anyway, so I'm like, ah, it's no point in it. We can just say it was short enough ah. that you guys did not necessarily risk taxing yourselves. Okay. You probably burned up a lot of your, your okay. Ethereum cores, but you guys didn't really do any strenuous activity. Other than somebody got horribly burned. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got three charges out of my burned out of my mobility war. Right. So it's pretty a lot for me then. Six on I get my dice out. Uh, as is unusual for this recording series, I don't think anything has changed rules wise since the last time we did a thing. There's one of the percentiles. There's another percentile. Are there more D10s in here? Yeah, there's a damage die. Alright. I grabbed me a bunch of percentile die. I put a dice out. Ah, that's a D4. I don't need that. Away with E. No, not for this. You don't need D4s. Get the hence. All right. Since my percentile set's completed, let's see if I can find a new division of tens. I think I got like six or seven of those, just in case key. And obviously, while we do have a very lovely dice roller bot, I do like to roll my own dice because that's that. Sometimes that lets me lie. <laughs> And sometimes that lets me tell the truth. Are you playing AL right now, Chief? The what? I said, are you playing AL right now, Chief? No, I'm playing Caligula Effect. Oh, okay. I just heard tiny anime voices in the background, and I'm like... No, that's Arya and Mew. Of course it is. Probably. <laughs> All right, but... So, uh, audience, look forward to future episodes on Caligula Effect, because Lucky is already playing it. That That episode of What's Up, where you talked about getting it for your birthday, hasn't even gone live yet. Yeah, no, my mom, well, I guess I was mentioning, my mom was like, like, literally after that show, my mom called me, it's like, hey, do you want your, you want your birthday gifts early? I was all like, sure. She drove do I band. want free stuff? <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put that on pause, that because loud. I gotta, I gotta. Okay, that's all my dice picked up, everybody got their dice, a pen, um, a pencil. Do I have three percent and three? I just dropped the die, shit. Yeah. Get that back. Okay. Now I got three cents of percent. Oh, there we go. That said, finally for once, all this lag did mean that I finally caught up. So this episode is uh, 25. All 24 episodes and a half are out. Yeah. Now we can build up a backlog again. Yeah. Yes. We'll build a backlog something. Honestly, there probably won't be much backlog because I don't, I don't have any plans for a lot of videos to release in the week. So, Well, hey, that means we can just play more Mages of War. Uh, maybe. I got a thing over the weekend. So it's good that we're getting this done now. <laughs> Because yes. we have family. So, that will be a little hard. Let's see. Dice. Yeah. All right. I'm just setting my dice to numbers. Uh, Is there anything else about last session you guys remember or you want to talk about? Because I feel like that's a good way to get people back in the spirit of things. What do you remember about last episode? Well, last episode, um, basically, we were all geared up to get ready to make our second airstrike on an enemy fortification when we got a distress signal from a Zeppelin delivering 
secrets, I guess is the best word to describe it. And so I grab the um, A team and a B team, and we zip, zip, zoop right over um, using our revolutionary. I don't, it's not really revolutionary, but a new um, what do I want to call it? Flight system, transport system, thing where we you can, can basically probably just call it a, a a new flight tactic, a new flight tactic that basically expedites um small teams into um, wherever they need to go. We arrived to the Zeppelin. It was under attack. We were all like, um, we don't like that, so we're going to make it not be under attack. Um, Marth, uh, excuse me, um, Ulrich uh, murdered a lot of people, as usual. I tried to murder people, and I got blasted with lightning. Real lightning. Yeah, He had a fistful uh, of lightning. Fistful of lightning. Um, the XO, um... Shot uh, every motherfucker <laughs> in the room. <laughs> Which was astonishing because she's not that good at shooting people. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, uh, it's experience. very... Uh, very late. Yeah. How the game explanation is just that all of her commanding officers being shot. Yeah. Channeled that uh, stalker of um, no one gets to hurt this man but me. Um, and once we had cleared the skies, we came on board the Zeppelin. Um, I was very injured. There was much medicking. I'm still. That's not, why I'm you still... brought a doctor. You brought yep, two doctors, uh, actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. Honestly, that's that's literally. I'm pretty sure that's literally why one of your companions is the corpsman. Was just <laughs> we need a healer. <laughs> like... The captain is not going to stop running um, headfirst into danger. Yep. He's just not. How can a man so smart be so dumb? Um, um from there, um, because we had brought a team of um, our recovery and support, which basically included, you know, doctors and mechanics. They, you know, dispersed them on Zeppelin to aid with repairs and help. While we met, um, I did, I'm pretty sure I wrote her now. I'll be here at the bottom. Oprah's Helena Reaper. Yeah, and Oprah was... is Colonel. Yes. So, higher rank than me. Kind of a scary lady. A little bit. She, um, basically, she has been doing a bunch of research into demons. Um, I remember that she is a poison maze, um, well noted for her work in prosthetics. Um, she has combined these two things to make, uh, what did you call them again? I forgot. Panzergeist. The Zargeist. Yeah, the Panzergeist, which is Armor Panzer. Ghost. Which are basically giant autonomous soldiers that are nothing but armor and spirits. And kind of scary. Very scary. We had a short discussion about the morals and ethics about this as I, I asked if everything was above, on board. And the good colonel um, alluded to some things that maybe um, while everything's above board, there might be more secrets that uh, she has. Concerning basically her zeppelin and maybe the reason why she's keeping a harpy on board. I don't know. There are questions. There are questions. And as there's some sort of complex. <laughs> yeah. Ulrich was decidedly unhappy with this, with um the state of things, but I had to, but I had to give him a word of warning to mind his words in front of a colonel, you know, who even outranks me. <laughs> yeah, nobody really wants to get the firing squad. Yeah. I don't... Right. Um. Other than that, um, I believe we were going to disperse. We, uh, we were gonna basically stay with the flight back, which is gonna take about eight hours. So we're gonna take our time, explore the Zeppelin, and see if we can learn a thing or two. Because you are on Z four four four, aka the Terrask, with only one R, because it's the original French spelling. <laughs> Don't ask me why your uh German commander decided to name it after a. a scary French thing, but she did. I mean, how many scary German things do we have? Well, I'm not in there somewhere. Chris. But yeah, so basically uh, the actual flight back is you've got plenty of time, so basically if there's any scenes you want to do, anything you want to poke, you've got the time. Otherwise we're gonna, you know, cruise on back. I just looked up something, um... Oh, it's not actually a beer wolf. It's actually a werewolf. They just call it a beer wolf. Okay. I was about to be like, excuse me, Germany, do you have wolves that drink beer? 
This would be amazing. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I'm not shocked. I mean, I'm sorry. It's like I was, imme- I was, I mean, I was immediately concerned, and like people, they are having tales of crows drinking out of coffee cups. Well, yeah, corvids are very smart birds, but uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, to recap, the t- the Z four four four, the Terrasque, is a pretty typical combat zeppelin. It's it's pretty big. It's about two hundred meters long. Um, it has a crew of twenty two. So there's twenty two airmen, I guess we'd say, uh, aboard. That's the actual crew and staff. It has the ability to be a mage carrier, uh, but was not currently uh, was not currently carrying any extra mages. Or if they're, they are, they're part of the machine crew who are not, like, suited up in flight units. Uh, it can hold up to uh, 12 mages with flying units as passengers, basically. Uh, and it's been equipped with a battle mage tower, a cargo crane, and a machine shop. Um, I do know that we, I sent the scouts up to the tower. It's like, you guys, keep eyes. Yeah, and so the, the Battle Mage Tower is a special tower or castle where you have maximum field of vision. It doubles as a mage's workshop. Um, so basically, you while you're standing in the tower, you get a plus 10 to spellcraft rolls, and you can increase the range of your magic talents by the vehicle agility. Oh, wow. So you get you get an extra All 30 right. meters. Basically, this is so mages can do stuff in vehicle combats on their own. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, you've got a very wide field of view. Uh... And then the cargo crane is basically a crewman can operate the crane. It's a full action. You can uh, recover vehicles and bring them on board, and you can lift a maximum of uh, 25,000 kilograms with the cargo crane. So, you know, if tanks existed, you could recover tanks with it. Uh, (laughs) Or planes. I don't think you'd want to do that because there's not enough room to launch a plane from this thing, but you could. And then the machine shop's pretty simple. That's just a bit like the base feature where it's like, that's it. Machine shop. Yeah, everybody on the vehicle gets consi- counts as having a toolkit. You get a plus 10 on craft and mechanics test to build or re- repair things. And when you're making the make repair action, which is the thing you can do on uh, heavy vehicles, very large vehicles, you get a plus 10 to it. So you're, you brought a couple of recovery team members with you. Um, yeah. A decent number. I think you were like eight deep, so... Or, or did you go up to 12? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think I brought four of each. Okay, yeah, you went up to 12. So, yeah, you those guys are very efficiently working right now. Nice. Um, so that means that probably in a couple of hours, because uh, you wanted the scouts to do it, you probably fixed the... Because the, remember, the, the conning tower was damaged. You oh. probably fixed the tower first, uh, and then they repaired the machine gun mounts and any structural damage to the engines and stuff fairly quick. Which is good, because you... This thing's not super fast. It's like, I mean, for us, when I say it's got a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, you're like, ooh, that's fast. But on the scale of things over long distances, <laughs> that's not that fast. What? It, it... Like, I think even like slow planes, like the heavy bomber, are like a couple hundred. Uh, But yeah, so uh, people are chatting in one second. I'll mute that real quick. Uh, They're going to distract me. Distraction! So yes, is there anything in particular you want to hit up while you're here? Um, like um, the good colonel was alluding very much that there might be a metal spirit bound to the Terra. Now, when it comes to binding, is like a binding like it has like a core location, or is it literally the whole? Uh, uh, a well, it depends on the, how it's structured, but you would know that binding is a type of ritual magic, and yeah. it it would have required, unless somebody was really good and really crazy, it would have required an array to set up. So, how big that array is, you don't know. Literally- You'd probably want to go poking around. Uh, if you want to, if you want to poke some stuff, uh, you can roll me either investigation or spellcraft for magic knowledge. Uh, let's see here. So, at a plus ten. And if Ulrich wants to follow you around while you wander around the ship, he can roll that too. Uh, huh. They want to. I mean, you, Mike. I guess as long as I'm nowhere near the Panzer guys, 
I'm fine. I, so I'll fall. Well, I'll ask if he has any specifics. If uh, Wolfgang has any specifics, but in general, I'm I'm expecting that he's now poking around like the machine spaces, like mm-hmm. the you know the engine room, the bridge, the superstructure. Not necessarily like oh, let's look in the cargo bay. Oh, it's full of armor robots. <laughs> Probably not in there. Close the door. Clunk. <laughs> Uh, okay. By the way, as, as a as a nice military zeppelin, there is some some sweet bulkhead doors you can slam shut and turn in here for dramatic right. effect. So I'm yes. gonna roll that. Okay, I'm looking at my dice. I'm trying to remember because I know I fucked this up. So I rolled a ten on my percentiles and a ten on my or a zero or ten on my one. What does that mean again? That's that's one hundred. That's really bad. God damn it! Well, this is a new session, so everybody's luck refreshes. Let's see, what? If you want to try that again. Yeah. I think I, I think I literally had this problem last time I rolled this. Because uh, it is a note now that if you're doing this in non-structured time, something narratively bad happens when you crit fail. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you can just imagine the crit fail is just like, your... Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's bad. Uh, um, yeah. So that's 18 this Okay. Um, Rewiring my brain for like to re like redo like percentiles is really messing with me because I'm like staring at him like I know this probably doesn't mean what I think it means. Number. How do I number? So I rolled an eighteen. I got a plus ten on spellcraft. I'm kind of well. I have an horoscope, but I'm probably not walking around like hmm hmm hmm. No, this is probably a little too close range for you to pop your (laughs) magic telescope off. So eight. Really gives me oh, crap. Uh, yeah, no. Good. All right, both um, did so, pretty good. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have a fucking 50 will now. Shit. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 60 out of 18. Um, here. Eight. That is not how to number, Lucky. All my luck, all my numbers is uh, bamboozled. Okay, and I'm going to open up a notepad because I'm going to take some notes. I need to remember to take notes. Or do you take notes? Uh, now, taking notes is good, because I actually I was going to yeah. bring this up earlier. Um, do you guys remember what I called the Dreadnought ship? Not that I'm going to telegraph if it's in this or anything, but I'm like, I was just thinking like, shit, I think I changed the name. What did I decide it was? I think it was the Victorious. Yes, I think that was it. I was, I was like, I want it to be Victory something. Did I switch that back? Yeah, Victorious. There we go. Oh, yeah. Like, the Lord okay. does carry a pet handset. All right. Okay, oh, good to use success. Yeah. Sorry, it took, I had to math. It's okay, I have to do that all the time. That's why there's a calculator by my computer at all times. <laughs> so, both of you pass with some significant degrees, uh, nice. and you're wandering around, and uh, yes, sp- spellcraft-wise, just, you know, extending your senses, figuring out stuff. Um, on the inner layer of the, the shell, and on the uh, like structure of the Zeppelin, you know, the rigid components, the internal skeleton... Uh, are these big, long, elaborate array chains. Basically just, you know, waves and waves of runic script. Uh, you know, folded right, you know, built right into the steel. Um, and obviously, since you both passed significantly, you understand that this is a ritual of binding, yes. Uh, since neither of you feel like throwing up or something terrible, you're 90% certain it's not a demon in here. 90 to 95, you're pretty sure. Neither of you have bound a demon inside a circle, so you don't know for certain, but you think it's probably an elemental spirit. Hmm. Uh, and, and you can tell the effect of that. You've probably heard of, like, old sailing ships using figureheads and kind of stuff to, like, get spirits to leave your ship alone or even kind of invite them aboard. So, um, since basically this means that the... Uh, first off, uh, as uh, Wolfing has already sensed, there, that means there's a shitload of metal mana just floating around in here, just all in, in the in the concentrated inside the atmosphere of, of the vessel or in its surface. Um, but because this is a, an extension of the domain of the spirit, um, that means the spirit has perfect knowledge of the ship and everything inside it. So if you were like the the, for instance, if somebody attempted to sabotage the zeppelin. The spirit could be like, hey, somebody loosened bolt number 230 on the port side. Oh, that's how she knew that the engine was 
maybe a little off. Yeah, so the it has because that's the thing that uh, genius a a full blown elemental spirit has is they have perfect knowledge of their domain. Uh, so genius. the spirit has perfect knowledge of the ship. It can also because it's an extension of its body. If it expends, uh, if it expends mana, it can heal structural damage. But you would probably know from experience with using magic and stuff, machines are very complex, and it, you know, didn't go to engineering school, so. Delicate repairs, it probably can't do, but mm-hmm. if somebody, like, tore off a, a hole in the hull, it would knit back together like your skin over time. Wow. So, it's a very robust ship. It's just, it's not a perfect solution, you know, like, you might think to yourself, why aren't we p- turning all of our ships into magic elemental ships? Well, well, for one, it's a fucking, it's a fucking genius loci. Those oh, yeah, no. Common. No, they're Where not the that common. Get a- Where'd she get a genus loci of metal? Where did she find one? Yeah, you don't know. And how did she stick it in a in a ship? Who knows? Questions. Though you do know that it's not uncommon for many magical relics of the past to have a spirit seal inside of them. So I don't know. She's from a from a long standing mage dynasty. Maybe she had something in in the vault in the back room. I would, well, that just makes me wonder why a family of poison mages would have a metal. I, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Um, and then the the third thing that this would do is the spirit is it's heavily restricted, but it is alive in this space. So inside, like whatever the definitions of the uh, the body is, the array, it can manifest and it can alter the environment. So you're pretty sure that means that this thing could steer itself if it wanted and. Possibly there are certain areas where the spirit could, like, manifest or control parts of it. Like, you don't know for sure, but maybe some of those cables could, like, come alive and try to attack you if you were fucking around with the ship. Oh my. Um, but you also know that binding spirits is really dangerous because, depending on the disposition, like, metal spirits are usually clear-minded but stubborn. Um, yeah. Though they can be yes. a little greedy, depending on the type of spirit, um, or even vain, so you can kind of like try to appeal to their their lesser nature, basically. Yeah, I um, don't know if the spirit was actually like negotiated into a contract or like trapped into a contract. Oh yeah, that's that's Honestly? the thing about binding is if if you know the tr- the full name of of a, a, a genius and you you can summon it to a circle. You can force it to become manifest, and then you can power the array and basically be like, well, you're stuck in this array now. Um, you know that that's a common way that mages negotiate with spirits, and that especially if they're causing trouble, which is like, okay, you're stuck in this circle now. I'm going to set it up so it lasts uh, a year and a day or a hundred years. So uh, <laughs> unless you give me something, you're going to be stuck here a while, and it's going to really suck for you, and I'm going to go home. Um, <laughs> bye. But... Uh, <laughs> That's the thing, because they are effectively immortal, so long as you don't fuck up their source of power, um, you... S- spirits have a really long memory. They're nothing but memory, basically, because they're... They can make physical bodies, but it's their nature to be incorporeal, so... They remember a long time. Oh, excuse me. Uh, on the other hand, again, because you guys did pretty good on DOS, um, since this thing is not in a metal ley line, if the spirit tried to unbind itself... It would probably have a bad day, uh, unless. Oh, so it's kind of stuck. Yeah, it's kind of trapped in here. That's probably why there's so much, uh, you know, high density of ether in here is because it's basically stuck in a box. All its energy can't really go anywhere because it doesn't have anywhere to flow. But if something happened to the box, it would just go everywhere, and the spirit would die. Basically, this oh is this God. is a risk that people know about binding spirits in objects. You break the object if the spirit's not in a proper ley line of of mana it just immediately starts running out of juice and dies or like uh, reduces to a lesser level spirit like a moat like a cloud of moats or a a, you know a minor elemental so yeah uh this probably takes you you know 20 30 minutes of just wandering around looking at stuff and being like hmm 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 oh and that's um another thing that this thing could probably do is while i you don't know how how accurate it would be uh it can also probably like point the turrets and sh- pull the triggers because those are all made of metal basically cool. anything that is made of metal and is 
is connected to the body of the Zeppelin, the spirit touches as if it was part of its location. Uh, by the way, this is freakishly similar to uh, the thing that happened in Scythian Front, only that was a construct that was a train. Tra- uh, a demon train! Uh, but yeah, instead of uh, spending shitloads of money and magical energy making a construct core, uh, the good colonel appears to have cut some corners and was just like, I'll just stick a spirit in it. And it worked, and... Oh god, what is, like... What is humanity's view on, like, spirit rights? Are there even such a thing? People consider them just things. Uh, I think it's in my notes somewhere, but uh, spirits are embodiments of the ether. They are part of the raw forces of nature, so much like phantasmal creatures, they tend to be respected, but also, remember, you are 20th century humans, which means that, you know, nature is an abundance to be tamed and controlled. So, yeah, that's if, what, if that's spirits what I was to are, out. are causing problems in your neighborhood... You guys will, majors especially, will totally fuck up the local natural order of things to make it safe for humans. Oh, my volcano is erupting? Well, that just means that we've got to get a bunch of mages together and do the Dear Volcano, Please Don't Erupt dance. And perhaps (laughs) in some ages past that involved throwing people into the volcano, uh, now usually mages are like, we can do this with magic science. I'm afraid it's because of magic science. Uh, that is 110% of literally everything in this boat. <laughs> that over there, magic I'm science. A scared. Those guys, magic science. So yeah, um, it's uh, a. It means that the Terrasque is pretty powerful. It's probably a little bit of a fuss in a fight. Um, but it means that they need a very minimum skeleton crew to actually run the ship in a crisis. It's will take care of most large scale repairs on its own. And theoretically, if you could talk to the the spirit, you don't need any crew. You would just be like, "Oh, spirit, you know, turn on the autopilot." Well, can you were saying, can Lucky? we talk to the, can we talk to the spirit? Uh, yeah, you guys would probably figure out the like, um, like apex of the arrays and stuff. So, uh, you actually saw this when you flew in. Um, this zeppelin also has what I mentioned before. It has a figurehead way at the front. Oh. Uh, which, actually, there's a little observation deck up there. So you figure if you waltz up to the statue of an angry, winged iron lady holding a shield and sword, you could probably talk to her. Sure, let's go introduce ourselves to the ship. Okay. Let me scroll back up to... I like... I feel it's only... I I feel it's only polite. If it's a fucking genius, that means it has some actual thought. It means it can think. Yep, it's a... It's a where. It's a where. And it is bearing us back home. I feel it's polite to at least introduce ourselves, and I kind of want to know, like, its take on things. Yep. All right. So, uh, all right, you want to run up? Well, if it, it, well, if it'll talk to us, it might not. Who knows? Well, yeah. You, uh, when you figure out where the basically the the center of this array is, you go up there. You don't really, you don't really get any response. You'll probably have to like say hi first. Yeah. So, you know, you know, um, so, uh, let's, uh, turn on the Maximum Wolf Game Charm, and, um, you know, I'll regard the statue, um, give, give a bit of a bow, and it's, like, what's, what time of day is it? Uh, what time of day was it? I think it was afternoon when you started, so it's probably still afternoon, you're probably gonna get in in the evening, or, let's see, was it, did I write that down at all? No, I don't think I wrote down anything extra for this. I think we decided that maybe it was it start when you started the flight. It was maybe like late morning, and now it's afternoon. All right. Well, then I want to be like, um, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, good spirits. I am Captain Wolfgang of the blah 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 blah. I have come to give you my greetings and pay my respects as well as thanks for bearing us home after the battle. All right. So, as I said, this is a figurehead, right? Like it's yeah. Uh, you know, affixed from probably about knee high up to the outside, and you're kind of like standing on the observation deck. It's a little chilly. Mm-hmm. There's some wind blowing by. Some I'm windows. out of my armor, and I'm in my fly jacket. So, yeah, you're snug. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another thing I um I should mention um because I got roasted literally inside my armor. I had to get out. I had to almost be peeled out of it, and I have a couple of my recovery guys cleaning it out. And yeah, you know, and you're also it. you can't see it in the full flight jacket, the full flight suit, but you're. You're, you know, rolled in bandages in a lot of places. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, so and th- so it's it's a little weird, but you guys have been around like golems and stuff before. The figurehead kind of like tilts, like the head tilts and kind of looks back at you, mm-hmm. and kind of gives you a, a slow nod. And it's you know, there's a lot of this, you know, creaking iron noises. Mm-hmm. Uh, gives you a nod. All right, so we have its attention. That's good. Yeah, and it just kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Raises a big iron eyebrow at you and just kinda like eh? <laughs> I will I will chuckle a little bit and um it's like ah, uh, you didn't expect someone to come and speak to you. Well um uh, uh where I come from we must give spirits their due respect, no matter no matter their form. And as it as it and it seems you have uh, quite the duty put upon your shoulders. Whether it has been forced or not, I cannot say for sure. But unfortunately, that is not it is not my say. So there's kind of a, hmm, and you know, you kind of feel the the, mm-hmm. the metal vibrate. Uh, and it, uh, uh, you are, uh, this, is, this is important because it's been a while. You are, your only elemental affinity is metal, right, Wolfgang? I have metal and, well, I started with metal, but I also have fire. No, but your your core elemental affinity, like as a, as a player. Yeah, is metal. Yeah, right. it's metal. That one's where you got your free spell, and you can't ever pick uh, wood, etc. Yeah. Actually, which but, but that reminds me, because your, your adjutant is, uh, the XO is wood, right? Mm-hmm. She's probably a little uncomfortable in this thing, especially as you go explaining that it's a, oh, the the boat is, the airship is actually a metal spirit. Um, She's probably slightly, uh, on a scale of, of one to five, I'd say a, a three to four frowny face. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, that's bad. Three to four frowny phrase means I might just get randomly slapped, up, slapped upside the head. So, speaking of, like, obviously, and without doing, like, post effects, I can't really represent this, but the the figurehead kind of speaks, uh, and and her tone of voice is is very kind of, like, metallic and reverberating, like, mm-hmm. uh, your characters would probably compare it to almost, like, like hearing it over, like, a, a PA or a radio address kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So it just kind of says like, uh, "Always a pleasure to uh, meet a fellow wielder of steel. You are quite polite for uh, those among your kind. Uh, indeed, kind of like uh, you can tell the the figurehead's not really it's not really designed to flex. So the spirit has to exert a little bit of effort to make its mm-hmm. arms and arms and stuff move. It kind of waggles the sword arm." Also, by the way, it appears like you're pretty sure the spirit could manipulate it so it could drop them if it wanted. But the the statue that it it's occupying looks like the the sword and shield components I mentioned are basically fused in the hands. It could probably oh. let go if it really wanted to, but then it wouldn't get those back because you're oh. currently, you know, four kilometers in the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Sokka dropping his space sword. Space sword. Uh, but it kind of it kind of waggles with its sword arm and says uh indeed i am bound to this uh location though uh compared to my previous experience this is remarkably mobile metal spirits do not often f- uh yes she would say sp- uh, spirits of of metals do not often fly that is true i guess from another uh, perspective though she, the the head kind of looks you up and down notices the the flight jack and is kind of like uh though i believe you do so <laughs> it is my calling and my curse i believe uh i could say as i uh my family is quite familiar with the going on uh, below the earth but i am the first one to so do above it kind of creakily uh, nods her head again I was like, I must admit, it is my, it is my first time meeting uh, um, a metal spirit of such grandeur as yourself, and I, <clears throat> and I, yeah, and I just wanted to make sure that nothing was. I will, you know, pause for like as I think of the. She kind of. It's very I mean, weird to hear a metal statue chuckle. It's kind of, kind of musical, almost like um, uh, like. Uh, playing music with glass, you know, kind of like reverberations on on glass and stuff, mm-hmm. or crystals, as it were. 
and it maybe has a little bit of like it a is. static radio hiss to it. It's a very interesting experience. Yeah, um, I'm enjoying this experience. So yeah, uh, she kind of she kind of continues while you're thinking about it and says, uh, "Indeed, I am here of a bargain I have struck. Uh, you have." Met the lady. I believe many of your kind. The let's see, what would be a good? How would she refer to mages? Because she probably wouldn't. Um, she probably use a direct trans translation of of mages. Uh, you know, wise one. Uh, I believe your fellow wizened ones. Uh, call her the Colonel of Death. Uh, <laughs> though I do not know in in particular. I have I have personally. Uh, in my, uh, would you say? What would you say? My time as her colleague, kind of tilts its head up like she's thinking about stuff. I have seen her save more lives than take. Uh, but indeed, it was a a particularly interesting bargain. While she did catch me unawares with her sorcery, uh, the offer was quite intriguing. Uh. As of the moments, I have very few regrets, other than those uh, bothersome insects uh, swatting at my territory. Thank you very much for removing them. They were you know, unpleasant. I'll give another bow, and it was like, it was uh, my pleasure, Lady Spirit. I believe your technicians have also repaired some of the more technical functions of this vessel. I also appreciate that, though I must admit there are times when I do not understand well uh, your sorcery of logic. You think she's referring to, like, engineering? It's... Uh, obviously, as a spirit, she's a little... Her frame of reference is very old and probably a little bit weird. Like... Oh, so she probably thinks of science as a different type of magic. Yeah, basically, it's a... Like, she would think of... Because she is a spirit of metal, she would think of certain aspects of physics as just part of her elemental nature. Like, metal... Metals are... Some metals are magnetic, right? They conduct electricity. That's just a thing. That's just how... The elements work. It's very literal. Yes. So. Okay. Like, to her, she doesn't necessarily, you know, what you're doing when you, your engines are probably, like, diesel fueled or something in this case, or possibly electric. But basically, she would understand that you burn fuel, which means you create fire energy to convert it to, you know, like, air energy or water energy that turns the mechanical, like, her, that's her understanding of, like, the physics of this whole thing. Yeah. So to because she's a metal spirit, she mostly understands stuff like mechanical interactions like, well, if you turn, you know, cog A to cog B turns, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. Well, it seems like, OK, it seems like, again, um, the good um, quote unquote kernel of death is actually pretty above board with things. I'm you could roll getting... empathy in this case to kind of get a read on her, though. Let me see. Isn't he, is there any inherent penalty to this? I mean, it's uh, a metal statue. Yeah, if, if there's not any, but I will, I will give you a minus ten because this is a little hard. Like, she doesn't like have a, anything remotely resembling nor normal body language. And she's um, well, I, like yeah. honestly, I would make it a minus twenty because it's a spirit, and she might not emote like the same way humans do. True. Yeah. Let's let yeah let's let's call it a minus twenty because not only is her right. her body language completely limited by her physical form, but also you're not sure not having interacted with a lot of spirits, and you don't have that, uh... Yeah. You don't yeah, have that quirk, right? I don't have that. Yeah, so you... Uh, you don't have a lot of experience reading her kind anyway. Yeah, so... Yeah, as I said, like... Ah, uh, and if you pass button. this, you might get a guess on what kind of spirit she was originally. I... I'm pretty oh. sure if you went to, like... If you went back to your academy and talked to some t some professors, some magisters, and were like, hey, what the fuck spirit do you call this? you would probably start an academic debate. <laughs> they would have to figure out the categorical de definition of what, sh what she is now, but you can probably figure out what type she was. Okay, so I'm going to pre-spend luck for a plus... Alright, All right. you're going to eat that I penalty? Like yeah, I'm going to eat that, because I only got a 32. I don't have anything for... I do have a train, so that is good. Empathy is per, effect. I think, based? Yes. Let me yes. double check my... So. Audience, if you want to play elevator music now, that's very appropriate. Yeah, sorry, I'm like, I'm like, I'm checking. No, it's okay. My... We're it's been a while since we played, so like all your different like dangling modifiers and stuff take a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to like. I don't think I. I don't think I. I don't think we've really used empathy. So You've used it a couple of times, but yeah. 
Uh, it, well, empathy wasn't a skill when we started playing this campaign. Oh, that's right. Right. Wasn't. Oh. That was probably around the episode 10 to 12 mark where I was like, I feel like our skills aren't quite diversified enough. Yeah. Well, um, motherfucking lucky me, um, I rolled a 6 out of 32. Nice. So I believe that's two, that's two degrees of success. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And uh, Ulrich, are you, are you bothering to roll or are you just kind of sitting back because you're not in this conversation? Uh, I'm sort of sitting back plus I think I'm not even trained, so it's like... That's fair. Even like, if honestly, I do spend I a lot, of, even if I do spend a lot point, it would only have a. Yeah, no, it's not great to make a train. It would still be not great still. Yeah. So I'm just gonna be like looking the other way. What are people skills? All right, so two degrees of success. So and this is an important thing. As far as the spirit understands it, yes, she basically. Uh, there was probably a little of contention with the whole. Well, you stuck me in a circle. Now I'm a little annoyed by this, but. The the deal they came to to get her out of the circle was negotiated in good faith, as far as the metal spirit thinks. So you would have so to talk to the ever- colonel to be like, hey, what was your deep-seated emotional motivation in summoning a metal spirit and sticking it in a zeppelin? <laughs> Which, unfortunately, from your... I think you may have rolled empathy on her last time. Um, your impression of the colonel would probably be you've got a 50-50 shot of uh, I did it because I could, or... I wanted to see what would happen. Yeah. Like, she probably did she it definitely for science, that. all caps, exclamation point. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, from what I, yeah, well, well, through the spirit, I definitely, I think I could definitely say I have a better understanding of her character. Again, where did these rumors come from? Uh, it's probably the whole, you know, the messing with ghosts me. and stuff. Yeah. Also, you do know that, po- that there's just straight up pre- prejudice against poison mages. Everybody is, everybody's like, but what if thousands of years ago a demon gave them their powers? And everybody's like, rrr, rrr. you know, it's. I mean, the, if. The demonology scars run really deep culturally with mages. Like, that is one of your few big taboos. So, everybody's yeah, like. There's the weird a thing on it. She's super into demonology. So, I'm like. I know. It's a little. It, she's supposed to, as a character, she's supposed to come off as, as a little bit creepy, but also. As the spirit says, she's saved, because you know that she's a surgeon, she's saved yeah. more lives, at least on the Zeppelin, than she's taken. So, yeah, no, if, if, and... if your conclusion is like, I don't understand this chick at all, that's part of the goal. Yeah. So, for the type of metal spirit, so I'll just really quick, you know, everybody oh. can look this up in their uh, Mage's Field Guide, but there are uh, roughly four commonly named types of metal spirits. Um... The there are kermads, also sometimes called draconiads. Uh, those are vaults. So if you concentrate a lot of metal energy in a location by say piling huge piles of treasure, you can get a kermad who um uh love to gather and guard wealth, but don't like to spend it. So they're very protective. Um, some mages will deliberately cultivate kermads so that they have somebody who's always looking after their money. But it also means sometimes ah. you have to negotiate with the family spirit to get your allowance. Uh, there <laughs> that are one way to save. <laughs> yeah, there are scoriads, uh, which are spirits of rust. Um, they're very rare and very mostly common. Um, if you have a conflux that you've built a industrial section over, like factories, workshops, and stuff, you'll often see them. Uh. Or if you, you know, this is something that's happened lately, much like poison, excuse me, poison spirits will appear in graveyards, a scoriad could appear in a junkyard, of which there are just starting to be now, or just in general, um, previously most mages saw them basically as products of, like, setting up a workshop and a forge, and then a spirit would appear there. Um, these are very earnest and industrious, um, this is probably more what this, what the spirit of the Terrask is like now. Also, um, she would probably tell you to call her Terrask, which is why the colonel says that. Everybody on the ship talks about, when they're talking about the physical ship, they're talking about Z-444. The colonel talks to the ship as Terrask like it's a person, which it is, kind of. Um, So Scoriads can also weaken and strengthen metal as a boon. Uh, But more commonly, you would have heard of these for sure, is you have... uh, Crystalliads and uh, Orchiads, which is crystals and then mines. So uh, she's 
doesn't seem vain enough to have been a crystal spirit because they are they are tend to be shockingly beautiful but also a little bit brittle a little snappy um because they're crystalline the most common are are the orchiads which i can spell for you because i had to kit bash these out of greek a lot <laughs> um but these are spirits of ore deposits nice. and uh mines that dig them up so they tend to be protective and stubborn, like you'd expect, but also they appreciate offerings and rewards. They appreciate payment and can thus be um, protective and friendly to the people who make offerings to them. You've heard plenty of stories of, like, you know, when you start a new mine, if you happen to find an an, or- an orchid or an orchid in there, you would, you know, shower it with offerings, and then after that, the spirit will almost always look out for you. It will let you know hey, this vein's tapped out, hey, you guys need to get out of here, the mine's gonna fucking collapse, stuff like that. So that was what you would guess this spirit is, uh, used to be. The, either it, she was sealed in something, or uh, the colonel found a, a spirit in a conflux that, I don't know, you guess nobody was, was watching out after. That seems a little weird. Uh, and just was, uh, you know, convinced her, or, well, like I said, bargained her to be like, hey, Get my Zeppelin. Like right now, I'm actually. Oh, was it lucky you broke up a little bit there? Oh no, I'm like I'm just writing, writing. Because again, like this is one of those things. Like I, I was really bad about like for like these past twenty five tech sessions, as I didn't notes on like, any. This is bad. I shouldn't do that. This I have a lot of information. I have. yeah, especially I if we are going to take a break in the next episode or two. Yeah, but we'll figure right. that out later. But yeah, so that's that's the spirit, and you know. If you got any more questions for her, you can you can ask her, you know. But otherwise, she seems pretty just like, yeah, I'm kind of you know, flying here, holding the thing together. Jet, hey, jet. All I got is ten stone, rune stone. Wait, I have a fucking hour. <laughs> what you gonna get? You gotta cast the runes and get your luck back. Yeah. So um, I, at this point, I will um, I will um, bid the good lady Terrasta. A farewell, which is kind of weird because she's probably literally. Oh yeah, no, like that's the thing. She has in, she has intellectus. So, uh, let's see. How does that? What's the actual spirits have awareness of their environment? And they suffer no penalties to protest for darkness or visual obstructions, and they do not need line of sight. Um, and they get a plus twenty on protest to sense mages or objects infused with ether. Uh, she's already got a purr of like forty. So basically. Um, she doesn't need to have line of sight to you to know where you are at any given time inside this ship, and has a huge bonus to sense you. <laughs> I'd uh, probably, I'd probably bump that up for you specifically, Mister Metal Man. Well, yeah, I will bet I'm here then. Says I hope I look calm going into the future. Right. The after you, you know, you kind of say your goodbyes, and that's kind of gives you a little, maybe a little bit of. Not quite a bow, because it's hard to bow when you're, you know, a statue at an angle on the front of a ship, even if it's an airship, but kind of like nods nods her whole upper body and then just goes back to looking forward, freezes in place. Oh, sweet. I have me- a metal logo. Metal tube. Sweet. Uh, and right, for but... instance, if you ever were concerned for the spirit and were like, oh no, the ship's going down, you'd probably want to save this part right here, the statue. Notice. Actually, that's... Notice. Cool. It's gonna be really fucking heavy because you're pretty sure it's made of like solid wrought iron or something. I can do it. <laughs> like honestly, low. If I can at least get the fucking figurehead, I can, I'll I'll figure out. Um, but um, if I have my way, it's not gonna go fucking down. So, four. Now I have a note, lady. Metal. Cool. All right, so actually, that was actually yeah. So I'm gonna take a moment. I'm gonna mold some thoughts. I'm gonna throw some bones, some gem bones. All right, you do the thing. I'm gonna look at my future. Actually, we can actually do divination as a ritual. Yeah, right? you could. You could try and set up a ritual to be like, hey, what's what's going on in my future? Uh, is there we my ritual try that. complexity? I'll All right. <laughs> Where's the table for this? Because it's in there somewhere. Try to example ritual magic. Divination, common ritual, sense or interpret the future using various components. You'd be basically throwing the runestones. Um, you 
looking to the future, looking for omens, key points, and important choices. Low-level divination can only look into the immediate future, but powerful divination can make prophecies or omens way far. So, uh, let's not go for powerful. Let's just let's see. Let's 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 see. Let's see some omens. See if we got some good or bad omens. So let's see. Perform. Uh, perform a simple divination is complexity. We'll probably call it. Uh, well, how far you want? You looking for maybe for like days or weeks? Um, the immediate operation days, right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Chris, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, yeah, days. Yeah, oh, days. Um, yeah. So let's just go with days. All right. Uh, we'll call that complexity ten then. It's pretty simple. Uh, let's see. Complexity ten. So that means you need one degree of success. Uh, is there anything else? You've got your components because you've got your runes. I'll scribe out a divination array. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you'd probably like, like how people traditionally throw runes or throw bones, you like build an, an array where certain uh, certain omens appear in certain areas. Um, you've got your array, you've got your components. You are in a place of power, so that's, what is that, plus, uh, plus 20. Oh yeah, we're literally inside a fucking. Oh no! Like th- that's the thing. I should I should say when I when I'm saying this, remember that uh, that uh, spirits genius form naturally in uh, conflexes in one or more ley lines connecting. So yeah. you are basically in a moving conflux. There is a shitload of metal energy just in this thing. Like it's like I said, it's the array that hold, holds the spirit in place and kind of makes everything this. Makes all of this part of its domain. It's you know, it's its biome. Uh, is everywhere. Every part of the core structure of this thing is connected to that. So there's a lot of aether here. Okay. So. Uh, uh, oh. Okay. So I have. Where, by the way, in the ship do you want to do this? Like down in the flight deck. Yeah. That's probably the most private area because you're. Your recovery team is probably switched to medical duty and is like treating the minor injuries the crew got, and your scouts are still up top on the conning tower. Yeah. So I'll take a moment. I'll take a private hour. I know the ritual probably won't actually take that. It says we have to, I have to contemplate. For yeah. So I don't know. I guess I'm kind of double stacked. No, that's fine. The actual yeah. ritual of divination is short, but like thinking about what you're getting with the stones is a whole thing. So yeah. So. Place of power. Okay. And obviously, I assume. Well, actually, that's a good question. Who's the subject of the divination? You. Yeah. Oops. Oh my arm got a blong. I don't know. Could I? Could I designate the operation? Uh, yeah. You could probably like an event. Yeah. A couple days out. We're gonna be a lot alive. I want to see. Do we have good on? No. Uh, I rolled a sixty-two. I mean, your will's 50 already, and you got a plus yeah. 20 on this. I got a plus 20, and I have a plus 10 to spellcraft. With so that degree of success. Alright, well, your complexity was 10, so you only needed one degree, so. Oh, yeah. Alright. Alright, you throw the bones, you cast the stones, they have all the, the classic Norse type runes, maybe some alchemical symbols on there. And you're like looking at the houses, the north and the south, and the east and the west. You know, the different planets and all that stuff. Uh, and so. Well, for I, this is actually noted in the description of examples of ritual magic, but it's important to remember that when doing divination, the future is not set in stone. Yeah. Uh, this is, if, if you see something bad, it's more like a warning or a caution than anything else. Um, yeah, I, I, it's noted that permanently altering fate requires immense power and complexity, and it's often called a curse. Ooh. Big ooh. Yeah, that's you know that's like self fulfilling prophecies and big shit. You just did a what? What's what's going on with this operation in a couple of days? So, uh, you don't see any like, so you don't see like any big warning signs at first. You're like, there's nothing that's like, okay, so there's nothing in this in the zone of the array that indicates tragedy or betrayal or anything like that. Um, you know, you see signs of battle. Uh, signs of, of strife. Those are pretty typical omens to interpret. Um, but, uh, cause there is, a, there's actually, there's, there is a rune. I know a Norse rune, which means giant. Thorn. Uh, and you're looking at one, you notice one of those is in there, and you're like, what the fuck does that mean? 
Uh, mm. No, you you feel like there one of these omens is definitely telling you that it's entirely possible that uh, in addition to your perfectly normal fight you'll get, and like um, you already know the weather, but you probably got signs that like there will be a fog or something. You know, there's water in your future, that kind of stuff. Water and light, oddly enough. Uh, but one of these runes is just sitting in the sector, and you're like, I'm pretty sure this is trying to warn me that there could possibly be negative spiritual interference. And so you sit and contemplate the runes for a while and get your luck point back, and you're just like, hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, while I'm doing this, um, I will dismiss... Well, I'll try to dismiss the EXO. The EXO will probably, like... The EXO is not leave it, not in this place, no. <laughs> uh, uh, she, but, he, like, her, her choice is probably, like, I can either stand here with you in the flight deck, or I can go stand in the cold on the observation tower. I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, but, Ulrich, if you want, like, a wander around ship with Old Man Wrath, it's like, I'm gonna be, like, literally sitting here staring at a bunch of gems for, like, an hour. Eh, okay, I'll just wander. <laughs> are you... You do anything specific in your wanders? Or are you just, you know, getting the feel for the uh, place again? Uh, uh. Just... I guess it's getting a specific feel for a place and anything that anything more that might be interesting that's not connected to any weird I'm more to say this. This whole thing is fucking weird. Uh, I mean, I mean on the one hand, yes, but also not like I said, connected there's a, there's... to not connected to like the oh, experience the that, uh, connected to the, the odd experience that the uh poison mage is doing. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, so, uh, you know, you're, you're wandering around, it's got all the stuff, there's, there's cabins, there's a little bit of a, uh, there's some, there's actually some, like, observation lounges, uh, but those have been taken over by various, uh, have a good drink, Marthy, might need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, there's a, there's a full mess in here, which actually has a separate section for an officer's club. Because, right. once again, this is the early 20th century, and literally everybody does that. Yep. All right. Even though there's, there's you know, t- t- there's like 20 guys on here, the captain and his senior staff has to be able to be separate from the enlisted men. Uh, right. So, yeah, like, if you if you wanted to catch a meal or something, because I, th- I, yeah. gu- I think you guys said that you were going to just, you know, munch ration rations mid-flight if you had to, so... You probably haven't eaten, but you don't have to. We'll try to catch a meal then. <laughs> um, but also, I was going to say, in in while Lucky is right, everything is weird here. There are some mundane things like um, you're trained in like craft and stuff, right? Now, uh, yes. So uh, there, there is the noted machine shop. So there are there is a full set of of machining tools on here, which is pretty interesting and like. In some cases, you can see kind of some of the stuff that the uh, the colonel had in her, in her private study, connected to her private quarters, which is, like, prosthetics, which are being modeled and stuff. But also, like, there are, uh, you know, from there, there's additional other equipment being, like, fine-tuned and stuff. Like, they've got a couple of your standard, standard-issue standard rifles that are uh, probably being, you know, modified and stuff that are being looked at. They've got uh, various spare components for this Zeppelin or another Zeppelin, stuff like that. Uh, you see a couple of, like, racks where they've got, um, either they've been modifying or, like, maintaining uh, even heavy weapons like uh, machine guns or anti-tank lances. So, like, there, there's a decent amount of equipment in there, and they've just got tools to work on around here. But yeah, alright, so you you grab a quick... It's probably not the best because they're probably working off, you know, their own version of canned rations. But it's not a, it's not a meal, yeah. it's not a ration bar. So, right. So, it's, you know, canned it's meats above, and canned vegetables. It's above eatable. Uh, yeah, like but he does, out. he does pour you beer from a keg. Oh. Because there's no water mage our- on board to sanitize the water, so it has to be alcohol. Yeah. Thumbs up. All right, so your hour's gone by. Uh, Man, I can't wait till we get our greenhouse done so we can have sweet ass herbs. Spice. Yeah. Oh, let's see. When did you actually? When did you actually ask your sister unit to look into that? It was before the first operation. 
Yeah, so it's been a, it's probably been about a month since then. Let's see. They probably uh honestly they've probably been working on it on and off. We just haven't thought to brought it up while we've been skipping through time. Yeah. But um probably a little slowly because uh the ground guys have had to take over some some more more patrol shifts because you guys have been in training mm-hmm. and ops and stuff for your big push. You know, you're you're doing the brunt of the work first, then she and the other land guys are gonna do the brunt of the work after. So like now you guys are are up and they they have a little bit more mundane stuff to do, but probably the greenhouse has been mostly assembled by now. I get roll. Which means you probably have to start growing stuff in it though. Yeah. Like it's here's still, a qu- another there. question I had. Like, I, like actually, uh, actually, how like big is the greenhouse? Is it just we just say big enough? Yeah, usually I think it's big enough. Let me actually double check the description in my book because it's been a while since I wrote that. I know we're not going to be having, like, acres upon acres of crops, but is it, like, a warehouse size? Let's go to grow house. Da-da. That is not grammatically correct me. Fixing thing. Yay! Supplement your own food supply. Uh, let's see. Actually, what's the, the scale of this in terms of durability? I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's probably pretty sizable. Like, you know, um... The durability could be the same as like, uh, you know, one of your your barracks rooms, right? Or or certain other smaller mm-hmm. units. So it's it's probably pretty decently sized. Like, you know, you could probably have probably... several several dozen workers in there at once, kind of scale. Oh, so, oh actually, so yeah, it's probably like a, like a good warehouse. Uh... Yeah, it, it would be a small well, like warehouse, a... but yes, it's yeah, 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 well, small warehouse. And obviously, so it's not as sturdy like a... as as a larger building because there's a lot of glass in it. But yeah. It's it's it would be fairly robustly sized. So we could like grow a variety of herb spice, but we wouldn't be put and maybe like some food supplement. But you know, it's not something that we're gonna like. It's something to supplement our food, not replace. Yeah, it's uh the actual mechanical benefit is that where is it? It's up here somewhere. Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, is that you get a basically to grow your own plants, you get a plus ten survival test bonus. And when you're cooking food with your homegrown supplies, you get a plus ten. So it's not like the it's not like the mess hall, which is like, okay, this assumes you have the facilities and food stores to feed yourselves, so you don't need to worry about eating. This is like when you make food or when you need to grow food, you get a little bit of a bonus on it. Cool. And then we okay. gotta probably import but whatever. We'll worry about that later. Um let's see, after the uh, but what I was going to say before was probably after about this hour, your your recovery team probably comes comes and finds you and is like, "All right, boss, we're all done. Excellent. Uh, nothing needs repairs. Everybody's medical stuff is taken care of." Somebody probably is like, "Hey, did no. I see what's what's Ulrich's rank again? Is it like staff sergeant? Did I see sergeant? Think oh, sergeant Gisler and... was I think uh, Ulrich was. Oh, let me look at that." I know you gave the was a uh, beast down. So you're probably like, did you ever see Sergeant Gisler in the in the mess? Oh yes, he was uh, grabbing a meal. It's okay with the yeah it's a mess officer. Should I give him three to? I'm debating if we want to fly back early or stay with the Zeppelin. Uh, you probably would have to call home about that. Call your boss because technically your orders were uh, secure and escort. So oh, it's escort. Yeah, yeah. So, she, yeah, you could stay. call her up on the radio because you can probably talk to her right now and be like, "All right, they're pretty secure up here. They're fine now." And yeah. the major might be, "All right, come home." But standing orders were yeah, escort back. We're, we're still flying over enemy territory, aren't we? Uh, it's been an hour or two overall, so probably not. Mm. But you are in the middle of nowhere, your territory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's 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 write it out. So yeah, pretty much the middle. Of- Middle of nowhere in our territory, still enemy territories. Kind can of. I retro? Can I retro? Can I retro- retroactively get permission from the good colonel to feed my men with that? Oh uh, yeah, you had plenty of time to converse with her, and you had time to yeah. fuck around. So yeah, I was like, yeah, can I make my men comfortable since uh, we will be probably the base? Yeah, sure. So and, um, yeah, she has I'll... no objection. They're uh, they're oversupplied because they yeah, they so... came a long way. So. Yeah, well, now that everything is, um, I will instruct my men to uh, be at ease, uh, grab a meal, or relax a little bit. All right. The uh, without you prompting them, and you you can tell them to knock it off or not, but without you prompting them, 
Uh, the scouts elect for a one on duty, three off duty rotation just by themselves. Mm-hmm. So one guy volunteers to stay up in the tower while the other three eat. Then you know one guy they can rotate that one guy out, stick a yeah. guy or two up there, that kind of stuff. Or maybe, no, actually it would be smarter. They probably volunteer for two man shifts. So two yeah. guys go down and eat. Then they're gonna come back up and the other two guys can eat. Yeah. Because having My one sentry alone is a bad idea. That's true. I'm glad my troops are very good. Uh, you've gone to great lengths to discipline these guys, so yeah, no, they, they're not dumb. Um, actually, that's right, the, the thing you picked for them is skilled, I believe, so no, they're good at what they do. They're good at their jobs. Uh, okay. Um, well, I know the job is escort, but I do, I will, um, I will, um, grab the XO, use the radio pack to give a report to the major and let her know that... We have rendezvoused, and we rendezvoused. we have rendezvoused, and we will our our escort back. All right. Just so we. Yeah, you you know, you get in contact with the radio tower. Leave a message. They'll take it to her. You don't get anything back. Give her an E. Yeah. Give an A on. Um. All right. So that's that. Yeah. Okay, so basically, so- it, once again, unless you guys have anything you really want to. What a poke. We can just, you know, cruise home wanna, the rest of the six hours or so. I kind of want to poke the harpy, but I don't know. If, again, that's in the colonel's private chambers. That's that's not a territory I am com- comfortable with. It's like some sort of zone of danger. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe once me and the uh, have dinner. I don't know. Uh, but all right. Uh, well, basically, speaking of dinner, you guys will be arriving back at the Capitol in, at dinner time, so, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. He's in tight. There, uh-huh. there's <laughs> probably gonna be a little bit of shenanigans with, with docking. They probably don't have a lot of experience with air, with airship docks. So, the uh, oh, simplest geez. way is there's basically gonna be a tether they're gonna hook it up to, they're gonna let it rest, cause it can, you know, idle in the air. Mm. And then, what they'll probably do is because they have, you know, this, huge crane rig on the back is basically everybody who's coming off can just hop on the crane and ride down like an elevator. Nice. Because uh, I I've because uh, I think that the um, like if this was like a passenger ship there could be like a, a thing similar to like planes or it could if there was a big enough runway it could land fully on the ground and you just like climb the climb the steps. But I think the the stark military way of handling it is basically there's there's a couple stories of basically docking tower you you cable to like it's a like it's a boat dock and there's a ladder so you can climb the the probably slightly spooky ladder because they didn't have time to build a giant staircase or you can ride the crane down the crane elevator only you guys don't have to do that because you're mages with flying gear you can just pop the hatch and hop out yep yep Uh, but so you guys can go back to base and collect collect I guess I will uh, what's the female reporter's name? It is in I notes. actually need to write that down. That's right, okay. I'll give a, I'll give them all to you again. They are written down here. So it's Caroline. Caroline. Uh, the Zeppelin coming in is going to probably be a bit of a hubbub. Yeah, there's probably a little bit of crowd of people. Um, at least around. I don't know the the easiest way to do this is probably to say that the docking spar is probably like in your base zone. Which zone. I think we I think we decided that you don't uh you don't have like heavy stone walls, but you do have like security fences and stuff. So people can't just wander onto base, but on the other hand, if an army was actually invading, it would not necessarily be a hard stop. Because uh, that was a thing I think you you wanted to actually build was like No, we need to build real walls. Yeah, because we're actually separated from the actual base. I I remember you so well, yeah, you're, you guys are spread out over some buildings. They're not, like, all contiguous. It's like a it's like a campus, in a way. <laughs> Welcome to the German military. So, yeah, there's a, there is a spar that's set up that they just dock to, and like I said, you, you guys can either... There's a, a big enough clear space on the ground that you can lower stuff down on the elevator, or yeah, you can... Yeah, I think, like, once we get inside of the base, we'll, like, dispark a little bit early so we can, like, you know, get things set up. Diva sure. Fucking Zeppelin. That's fair. Uh, and, so yeah, there's know, prob- there's definitely a, cr- a crowd of various military personnel who probably should have, be doing some other jobs. Uh, 
milling around the, the spar. You've probably got some loaders and technicians idling because they're like, oh, these guys are going to need to t- drop off supplies or take on supplies. Yeah. Um, you Do can that. definitely, you outside your from- base perimeter, there are there are just civilians in the streets looking up like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I can't do that. Ah, I mean, um, you could, you could, you're, you're a flying guy and you're pretty personal. You could be like, hey, people, disperse, go about your business. But technically, that would be the job for the local constabulary. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to. Harp. Remember, we're trying to win hearts and minds here. Yeah. Like, if you uh, wanted to be all like, whoa, does. hold on, this is a matter of national security. Everybody return to your homes. I mean, if we're not unloading the Panzer guys, when we unload the Panzer guys... No, um, too. actually, uh, if you want to talk to the... Because you guys are flying ahead. If you want to talk to the colonel about what she wants the unloading schedule to be, it'll probably be yeah. like, okay, first we need to dock. People need to get off. Basically, the the crew of the Zeppelin needs shore leave because God knows how many days they've been flying nonstop from Central Europa to Southern Alkelbulon. Yeah. Um, so they, like, need to stretch their legs, get out, touch the ground again. Uh. They will need to make sure that the engines are fueled and all those stuff are, like, supplied. Uh, they spent a lot of ammo earlier basically scaring off those, so they need to, like, restock on ammo and rations before they go anywhere. And then, probably for the sake of security, she would be like, yeah, if we're gonna, uh, if we're actually going to unload any Panzer guys for deployment here, we're gonna, we do it in the middle of the night. But okay. she probably needs to speak to, I think it was, yeah, it was Major General. She needs to speak to the major general first and be like, "Hey, I have armor ghost soldiers. Where do you want them?" And the major general's yeah, probably going to be I'm... like, "Keep them on your keep them on your spooky boat, your spooky sky boat until I decide what to do with them." Caroline um is the daughter of the major, general, right? Uh, uh niece. Niece, niece. Yeah. Niece. So yeah, that's that's the that's the uh the major general's favorite niece on his wife's side. Uh let me let me mark that. Favorite niece. Oh no, no. We there there was a lot of internal screaming. <laughs> there was. <laughs> um shoot. Speaking of which, like, she's much- she is probably I think we talked about this before, but she, I'm pretty sure she's probably through all of your exploits from last year. Uh, not any new exploits from this year, but your old exploits from last year, like the time you guys went for a swim. <laughs> uh and that time you guys raided an airfield. Time we jumped out of a plane at really, really high height. Yeah, I think she already got yeah. to that one. That was because oh, okay. that was one of the earlier things you did that was really memorable. So I believe we already talked about that. She she had written basically that story as an article. Uh, actually, uh, let, me, let me roll. Let me roll real quick to see what her artistic ability is. Whoa, a twelve! Holy shit! Ooh, okay. okay. Um, she makes sure to pass you the articles before she basically telegraphs them home, so that you know, you know. And also because they have to be government censored anyway, just in case she accidentally reveals anything sensitive. So, her descriptions of like your last couple missions of the year are, um, they're fairly factually accurate. There's n- there's not necessarily a lot of embellishment or outright lies, but boy howdy, do you guys sound cool? Like, um, <laughs> it's like it's turned to Ulrich. It's all like Ulrich. Are we actually this cool? Uh, you know, because there's there's descriptions of like. You and a dozen guys, without your flight gear, hiked through the desert in the middle of the night and hid in the woods to to sabotage these, you know, infernal landing boats. Um, like she, her, her story. You don't know if it's if it's her story or if it's the your enlisted men she talked to, but it doesn't mention the snafu with the bombs, <laughs> other than probably to mention like one of the bombs mysteriously failed and the the now. The now captain, you know, swum back and sabotaged the boat himself with his bare hands. <laughs> it was with your sword, actually, I think, because you, you yeah. were using Sunder. You just literally scored the bottom of the boat. Right. But yeah, so, like, they're, they're, very, they're very dashing and positive. And honestly, because she's writing it so well, there's probably not a lot you need to do in review. Like, nothing sensitive militarily is discussed. Uh, oh. like, honestly, she probably, like, pre-censors what you guys did to infiltrate enemy territory, which was just fly in there and camp out in the mountains, but just it would be, like, you guys hid in enemy territory until nightfall and then did the sneaky blowy uppy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, again, depending on how, depending on what 
you you would tell her personally or what you would let say to your guys to tell her they may or may not even mention stuff like and we used ritual magic to summon a huge fog they might just say and luckily it was foggy that night that's like that's really <clears throat> and honestly because we've talked about how your guys are pretty disciplined and loyal uh some of your senior ncos or maybe even your enlisted guys may have like asked for a minute of your time and be like hey so i've been talking with the reporter um how much do you want me to tell her basically like what's um, your men like you and are self-controlled, so they don't want to do anything that would embarrass you. Oh, I have such Basically. A I need to give them a bone. <clears throat> um, well, as I said, like, I guess I'd say be honest, just don't give away any military secrets, I guess. Right. So, they, they're they okay talking about magical tricks of the trade, so yeah, there's probably yeah. like, and we used, you know, magic to summon a fog, so nobody saw what happened, which means we didn't even have to fight any enemy soldiers. You know. Captain um, is really weird about that. She also probably okay. makes mention of some of, uh, like, something like, it's probably a footnote, like, not a full report, you know, not a full column, but it's like, and though I wasn't here to see it, you know, it was, it, it said to be wonderful, all the, you know, all the soldiers reported having a, 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 a merry and productive profitmas even though it was it was unseasonably warm uh in the southern hemisphere uh and uh it, it said that the uh, you know the captain even went and had a celebratory uh elephant hunt safari cuz you guys did that we did do that uh, i'm pretty sure you're not going to mention the rain of gems though cuz you still got yeah. some of those sta- cached away somewhere just in case keys yeah. yeah we have a map there's an x uh, and in fact, she probably mentioned some of your hearts and mind initiatives, like, you know, to bring in extra food, you uh, did what is traditional for mages and, you know, blessed crops and repaired tools and stuff. Yeah. Which is good, because you're, I believe you are, I know you said you wanted to, I believe you already did have a conversation with her about, hey, we want to try and, like, get people to naturally flow to the colonies as a cool place. Can you, you know, make yeah, sure to said, to like, talk up how cool it is here? Yeah. Um, because my military objective is to make our colony a lot more, um, self, uh, God. Independent, I guess. Yeah, self-sufficient and independent, so we don't have to rely so much on care packages from home. Or, yeah. Let it, making sure they send submarines and zeppelins. God knows how many weeks at a time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's so basically what she's been working on. Yeah. Oh, God, like, Honestly, I don't know how people would take the fucking carnal of showing up at our feet. Like, do I want to... Mm. Uh, actually, hold on. That's probably good. Uh, I'll do it as a single die. Call odds or evens? Evens. Uh, It's odds. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I will decide how I interpret that, and I will say that, uh, honestly... So, this is kind of a blessing and a curse here, but honestly... Uh, at least among your guys um, and the mage units you know, and that means probably a lot of the other mage units here, because uh, she works for the Army Research Bureau, most people don't recognize her, period. Oh, thank God. Like, you were lucky enough that your that your senior recovery staffer, who, like as we mentioned before, she actually didn't jump into the war until recently because she was she stayed to finish her term at medical school. So, you know, she actually had a personal encounter and then afterward asked around and people in the mage community back in the fatherland were like oh yeah that's colonel death she's real spooky isn't she though that did remind me since i remember telling that story that's another reason why people probably think she's she's spooky because there was there was the theory that um if you'll remember she had some kind of like uh congenital defect where she couldn't walk and then uh soon after her parents mysteriously died in accident she replaced her own legs with prosthetics so now she can walk. So that that might also we're not in a cyberpunk future. That's probably a little weird. <laughs> okay. May just twenty twenty? Sure, whatever. Chop your own legs off, get better robo legs. Awesome. <laughs> Make way for science. In the year you know, nineteen fifteen. Ooh, that's a little that's a little weird. That's a that's normally done only as a medical emergency. Yeah, cop. Yeah, cutting up your legs of your own volition. Okay, 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 okay. Alright. So oh god, well, I think we'll probably keep her, keep the good reporter from actually trying to get an interview with the colonel. 
Um, um I'm I mean you would just probably know military protocol. The colonel's in research. That's that's yeah. that's a thing, no. They don't Yeah, no. She doesn't talk to reporters, period, anyway. Good. But I'll just say that um the good um uh, Zeppelin Terrasque has come to support us in our efforts in research. And yeah, get a picture of the Zeppelin and call it good. Because I b- actually, uh, that's another thing. I believe that this was actually a role you did with with Caroline. Was you actually talked to her and were like, "Hey, you can't like, you know, you can't spoil military secrets, right?" So, yeah, be ca- be careful how soon you publish a report, right? Yeah, which is why it's now I think like February sometime, and she's you know finishing up stories from December. So yeah, um, if you just say that, hey, it's a research thing, we can't talk about it. Yeah, I I won't make you constantly roll social skills against this character to be like, don't do something dumb and treasonous. <laughs> it it would be more an issue of if you guys did something to agitate her and she was like, I must get the story, then she could you know like wield the major general against you. But luckily, your your interactions have been pleasant so far. Yeah, do I smell fire? <laughs> like he's got to double check for well, smoke. Yeah. Um. One second while I go double check for smoke, please. That's okay. Let's let's uh okay. let's pause the recording and take a break anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So, so I, we were talking off my and stuff. And... Yeah. I was just we was just mentioning that um, because Lucky's been writing in his notes and he he wrote down that he thinks of the major as a little sister because Wolfgang is dumb. Uh. Which <laughs> prompted the time I was I was at first gonna say well we all know what Wolfgang's dumb about. But then I was like, actually, wait, what's your in? No, Wolfgang's well above the average curve in terms of, of intelligence. He's a 43, but mm-hmm. he's still dumb about things. And I was actually going to compare it to your character, Marth, because we just had this thing. Purr is one of your big deals. You're really good at Purr. You don't have empathy trained. So with the half yes. and then the penalty, you're like, what are people? What are emotions? It's not that you're unobservant, but you weren't trained in that particular zone. So I think of Wolfgang the same way, is he's not dumb, but his frame of reference about about some things is weird. <laughs> I am like an int of 40, so yeah. Yeah, Smart you're, 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 a, you're a, a humble country boy, but you are also not an idiot. Because uh, I think if I remember correctly, the, the, actual, the actual statistical average is like 30. So... You know, if somebody's at like a twenty ant, they're below average. They're kind of dull, and then you can go up from there. So forty is well above average, or you know what I mean. Uh, but anyway, as yeah, so like I'm gonna be taking this time to actually write notes on characters. All right. Well, speaking of the major, um, if you don't have any other like back and forth sideways sideways shuffles to do about about the loading and loading of this thing, I don't know. I will base. I will um. I guess um, the good colonel will want to speak with the major. Yeah, I, guess? I was. That's what I was thinking. Was basically you. You're gonna fly back to base. Um, on the ground, probably not flying because that's a you know. There's no reason to waste fuel. Uh, mm-hmm. But the the major is probably you know waiting there because you know you you you've had the rest of your scouts probably on like a light patrol or training duty. So once again, your soldiers aren't idiots either. So. Somebody yeah. was probably like, hey, there's a big metal blob flying through the sky. So she's on the ground. You probably deliver your verbal report really quick. Yep. So we yeah. shot people. I almost died again. Uh, you know, she notes that you're covered in bandages. She's kind of <laughs> like, are you going to need medical leave? Or... Actually, actually, how... Down you got again? most of it healed. Let's see here. I'm still down eight wounds. Out of my eighteen, okay. Uh, so I'm above half. That's good. Actually, let me see here. How long would that actually take me to fuck? Nah. There's an entry for this natural healing. Uh, that's why I didn't see it. Let me take way at the bottom. Who's dying? Natural healing. Uh, uh, God damn it! I have a phone call. All right, One Lucky's second. gonna look at his phone. Uh. Yeah, I had a, I had a, I, I told you t- uh, tomorrow I had a side job land up. Uh, it got uh, postponed because one of the people I was going to be working with just shot himself in the thigh. Mm. Great, Fun yeah. Stuff. All right. Uh, okay then. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we're, well, uh, let's go ahead. We're back live again. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. No problem. Um, I'll speak for them. Uh, so uh, I looked happens. up natural healing and I highlighted it. So natural healing, a character heals. Uh, wounds equal to their toughness mod divided by two each day naturally round up. If they are resting and receiving good medical care, this becomes toughness mod and wounds. 
This can be doubled by applying long-term care where another character makes a medication test to care for the target. So, what's your toughness? 33. So, three, so... Yeah, you would pro- you would you would probably need a day or two of of medical rest, basically. It's like it's like uh, you lay in bed and you don't move, and you know Wasn't people have thing? to swap your bandages and stuff. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you, I have you guys to... do have a heal a healy potion? Yeah, I know, but uh, but same... also you have the metal, which uh, means that you heal plus one wound from all sources. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot because you've been that, injured so in combat probably... before. That was actually probably I forget. I need to remember that. So I only probably have. I'm only down seven, but still, it'll be a couple days. Uh, no, that would be if if another character gave you long term, uh, care. That would be exactly one day because it would be six plus one, because it's your toughest mod oh, double, okay. and then plus one. So, uh, so I would lay to the major. Um, I'm pretty sure if I lay down for a day and don't move, I'll be in tip top shape, or the day after the. All right, and so she's like, "All right, so ordered." Uh, but first we have to finish up your current operation. Mm-hmm. And then basically it's basically um, you give her your verbal space. She's like, okay, scratch, you know, six floor guys. They shot at us. They had heavy units. Some of them probably passed out and crashed. We tried to save them. Did we actually save any of them? I forget. I think I one. Can't, you grabbed one guy, I think, who passed out. Yeah. Uh, do I speak floor? Yeah, I do. I don't know. You got a lot of languages. Yeah. So you probably could have, like, interrogated that guy, but uh, he was probably, I don't remember his exact wound total, but he was, he passed out from shock damage, so he took a lot of wounds, so a being a non-player character, man. like, that guy's probably not woken up yet. Yeah. Well, well so, we're gonna put him in the stockade. Yeah, yeah put him in the, put him we're in the gonna break, assign him a nurse. And they're like, okay, plus one prisoner. Uh, for the sake of not hurting him any further, you probably would wait until they basically unload, but like, yeah. you know, got one prisoner. That's gonna be super fun. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to contact uh, a Fleur embassy to talk to to get this guy out of out of lockup. Mm-hmm. Probably gonna be here a while. We already got the other ones out of lockup, probably. Oh yeah, no, I be- I believe it's it's been months and months since your last since the last time you took prisoners. So they've they've all been ransomed back. <laughs> I shall write them letters. <laughs> so there's that. Um, uh, yeah. So basically, she's like, and then you're like, yeah, I did some fixing and stuff. Uh, you're not really in public per se, but you are out in the open. Do you want her to tell her the spooky secret stuff, or is that like, hell no? Is that gonna be and like, like hey, this will... later in your office? Maybe we should talk about some shit, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's basically like, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll wait. We'll wait for the the. You know, she's like, okay. So for the sake of decorum, we'll wait until the zeppelin comes in, and like. You know, make make sure that, you know, we're all here and everybody's signed in and then we can go talk. Mm-hmm. So the you guys stand there probably another couple of, you know, another 10 or 15 minutes as the Zeppelin kind of, you know, reduces speed and gently cruises in, you know, clonks up to the dock. And they, you know, un- unfurl the, the, the cargo elevator and just... So there's the, there's the prisoner on a cot, basically. There's probably about half the crew. They, you know, switch to skeleton crew and they're like, okay... You know, every, either they decided this beforehand or everybody drew lots and like, okay, you guys get get the equivalent of shore leave first. You're going to go unload and load on the ground. And then, you know, you guys can fuck off and go to the ground mess and maybe eat real food. Because yeah, yeah. it is about dinner time. Mm-hmm. Which I think we discussed we before a couple of our breaks. Uh, and veggie. And so, yeah, probably the, the colonel herself comes down on the first one, just, you know, rides down. Uh... She does not ap- appear to have a huge, like, uh, general staff with her. Just, like, there's a couple of extra crewmen on the uh, machine staff. So, uh, there's, you know, salutes and things all around and all that all that good stuff. And then it's just, like, uh, after, like, yes, hello, I am this, I am that. Uh, it's, like, uh, the, the colonel is, like, ah, yes, major... Uh, so good to make your acquaintance. Uh, shoot, I probably should name this guy. Um, I forgot. I forgot to judge on an extra character name, but basically, the equivalent of our conversation is like, "I've heard so much about you from Officer Blah Blah Blah, who you may know, who works with me." And the the oh. uh, the major experience is a two out of five frowny face. Ooh. Uh, but you know, she quickly switches back to her ultra sweet. Ah, uh, yes, of course. 
Uh, it's good to see that he's doing well. Did he come with you? And she's like, oh, no, no, he's, he's much too important. We left him back in the, in the fatherland because he has to work on stuff. Well, I'm down here doing science in the field, field science, you know, sciencey things. Uh, she, the, the colonel also very carefully avoids explicitly saying while well, you're out with a general, uh, like, you know, some of, some of these crewmen are, 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 you know, non, non mages. You've got like privates and stuff here to like hoof shit gophers. So she's, she doesn't mention any of the spooky stuff she's doing, but I'm just like, she's here to do field science, science in the field. Uh, be like, uh, the major's like, well, you know, while well, we were just a step back to my office to finish up a report, would you, you know, like to have dinner at the officer's club? And the major's like, oh, I could use a real meal. It's been a few, you know, it's been a few days. I have to supervise the unloading and make sure everything's handled here. And, you know, and be like, okay, we'll see you later in the officer's lounge. And the major just, you know, gently glides backwards out of the scene. Just like, hey, I'm gone now. Uh, that's your cue to also follow her, probably. Yeah, probably. So I'll walk. You just walk on back. And she's, uh, so she, uh, the first call. thing first, the major's like, so in case you didn't pick up that up, uh, she mentioned that she's off fianced. I don't think she mentioned the guy's name. She's like, yeah, that was that's that's my fiance. If you'll recall, I said that he actually got you know pulled from frontline due to the research bureau. So that's fun. That's super great. Oh she knows people I know. Uh, so hey, you indicated to me, uh, Captain, that there was unusual situations aboard this vessel. So before we have a lovely dinner with the colonel. Would you mind filling me in? Let me know. Ooh, boy, we're we're in her office, right? Yes, in her office. Doors closed. Um, I'm gonna um, like before that, or like, I'm gonna make sure that like you are outside the office to make sure no one's fucking eavesdropping. Well, we all just be. <laughs> yeah, I want you. I want you posted. Watch. Yeah. Yeah, so you're you. like, you know, oh, Rick walks the door. Oh, Rick, you know, uh, opens the door, closes the door, stands outside the door, arms folded. Very intimidating. You're scary, man. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna give her the quick rundown. Um, fucking uh, Panzer guys, uh, this deal. Um, fucking Metal Spirit and her Zeppelin. Fucking a harpy in her room. Uh, Very actually, we should say that I don't. We talk about this. I I told you that out of character because you asked. Oh. but you guys didn't oh, no. actually see that oh, yet in character. Oh, oh, okay, okay. You I my bad. What she called it was that she you you heard singing and you were like, "What's that?" and the the colonel was like, "All right, you can meet my friend Songbird, but you got to come to my in my private quarters." And you were like, "Whoa, let's have dinner first, lady." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, mysterious friend Songbird, I'll say that. Uh-huh. Um, and I guess I'll I'll let her know what I know of the colonel's reputation, but like based on my preliminary investigation, she seems to be weird but above board on everything except for this weird fascination she has with demonology well we all have our hobbies the major's kind of nodding and it's like well obviously it would be improper of us even as fellow mages to imply anything untoward about the conduct of a senior officer blah 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 mm-hmm. uh obviously uh she and i will get along like cats and dogs uh however based on your report and of course i uh, trust you completely, uh, Wolfgang, to you know relay the situation as you see it to me. Uh, it appears that your your first impression was correct. She hasn't technically violated any taboos, rules, uh, any laws, rules of law, or any of our major taboos. There are many conservative scholars who would be curious about the aspects of demonology, but I did make sure to contact some of the more forward-thinking magisters I know. After all, forewarned is forearmed, and Nobody has a lot of official experience with some of the things that you've described to me, so hopefully her knowledge will be a help, uh, and you have, you know, encountered nothing untoward, no unusual, uh, you know, no unusual signs, you know, it's not like she's doing blood sacrifice in her in her back room or anything. So I guess we'll just have to accept her help. Uh, I will say, many of these ideas I would not have thought of myself, though I must admit that, unlike a lot of my kin who are void mages, I am more gifted in the direct aspects, so uh, it is not as often required of me to come up with creative solutions. 
I find that blasting things with lightning usually works most of the time. Yes, I am quite familiar with that. You know, you hold up and pull up your sleeve to your bandages, and she kind of she kind of winces and like, ah, yes, all right, maybe we'll avoid <laughs> that subject for a while. <laughs> uh, all right, okay. Uh, unless there's anything else you want to add to your report, uh, uh, you no. should. She gestures to the door. You should, you know, dismiss your man for the night, and uh, I will. I'm gonna go later. <laughs> gather the whole of the. Uh, I'll gather the rest of the senior officers in the unit to have. Uh, to be around, but we'll have a nice quiet dinner in the officer's mess. Which, of course, you were invited to attend, but if you would prefer to start your medical leave now, go for it. Um, I'll wait till after. I feel like I should. That's fair. Also, you haven't eaten yet, so. That's actually one of one of the notes about natural healing is that you're supposed to be, you know, resting and well-fed to do it, mm. so. Alrighty. Uh, dinner. Uh, somebody probably dropped a line to the cook that this was important, so uh, some of the good stuff has been broken out, you know, like uh, there's there's some actual steaks here, uh, there's some some Bring fresh summer alcohol. greens, some probably some summer vegetables. Somebody may have found something involving chocolate or caramel for dessert. Maybe some marzipan, I don't know. Ice cream. But yeah, so there's, it's not like, you know, full three courses or anything, but hey, it's it's real food, it's fortifying, you're the officers, you get to eat good, except for Ulrich, who's a senior, well, he's a senior NCO, he can probably, he can probably visit the officers' mess, but you probably don't usually eat here, because that right. is slightly different things. I mean, I guess we could... Mm. I mean, he's your uh, senior NCO, so if you need to, like, discuss business with him over dinner, he'll sit here and eat, but it's probably, like, class-wise, the, even the even the non-commissioned officers don't hang out with the commissioned officers in your free time. And this is kind of, I feel like this is kind of a formal event, so I'm trying to figure out if... Yeah, or I think I'm, I'm going to have to say you're going to have to probably pass on this dinner, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I'll go just... <laughs> yeah. Like... Where the officers chat, be all like, "Yes, mm, interesting. Yes, let us rub elbows." Yeah. That said, as noted, you guys are mages, so you're you're even in your quote unquote enlisted mess. Your your quality of goods is slightly higher because they are handled by mages and requisitioned by mages. And well, maybe maybe not necessarily like steak. There's probably probably some decent meats or something. Maybe they get you a nice fortifying stew. You know, maybe we have maybe we have some good sausage. I was actually lurking. There's a lot of fucking, um, there's a lot of fucking German sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, they, you know, tonight's meal is probably like some of the other stuff that they weren't necessarily serving up the officers. And like, hey, you got this. If, if, I don't know if Ulrich's very talky, but if he wanted to pass on that, hey, the officers are having a very fancy meal, you know, somebody would be like, oh, well, we should eat good tonight, too. Hey, (laughs) break open the kegs. Beer rations all around. Yeah. Everybody sips. Nobody quits. The captain. <laughs> okay. Well, but yeah. After dinner, I will make my polite um, excuses, and I'm gonna go lay down. All right. You probably it's probably polite conversation. The major asks a couple pointed questions about how her fiance is doing, and the colonel, you know, uh, dodges most of them, but basically. You get the impression that he that he's probably like a first or second lieutenant under her who handles adjutanty things like hey I'm going to I'm going to Alkelbalon for probably several months. I need you to make sure the laboratory doesn't burn down while I'm gone. Okay, thanks bye. And he's I like but like my her. my uh, but my adorable fiance oh you're gone. She left. I mean she already got her elder sister here. I don't know if she could handle her fiance too. <sighs> Uh, you, probably because it would be very impolite, you've not necessarily quizzed the major on her, her marriage prospects, other than that she, she discussed with you, like, when talking about Christmas letters and things, you know, prophetness letters, she was Mm -hmm. like, well, gotta send something to my fiance, he's back in the, he's back in the fatherland, hasn't left, got reassigned to, uh, you know, Army Research Bureau. (laughs) I could make a joke about that. I will maintain is, military decorum. Is one of your jokes about the fact that, that she vastly outranks him, probably? Yeah. Because she, she, she's a freaking war hero at this point, despite being 17? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I should probably figure out what month the Major's birthday is in, just so that can be a plot point. Maybe after season break, because <sighs> it's not, it's not going to come up anytime soon, but 
That'll be yet another yeah, fun Darcy. thing that uh, Wolfgang can struggle with. <laughs> Gasp, it's the Major's birthday. What do I do? I must invade another country and find lots <laughs> of gold bullion for her. <laughs> I'm gonna invade the Fleur territories and find a cute dress. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the major. I don't think the major would appreciate a dress. I don't know. Well, actually, the major's does, probably like, not as much of a tomboy as Tanya is, despite Tanya being an inspiration for her. But uh, also, she, you are you are in Africa. Yeah, it's hot in Africa. Dresses are probably not in season ever. Uh, like know. she would, if you were gonna get her something good looking, you'd probably be looking for some kind of like very prettily made, but you know, desert tunic or robe, like something local, uh of a of a oh. certain amount of quality and decoration that she could wear comfortably outside. Not that she has to wear that to floral because she gets to wear. Maybe uh, I'll just buy her like a hundred maybe I'll just buy her like a good good amount of fucking trashy dime back uh Honestly that that would be from the heart. Cause you you know that she spends she spends most of her she stays up way too late at night because she's a teenager and she has she has her college powers, basically. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she can operate some of these days on, like, three hours of sleep. She stays up all night and uh, reads, you know, cheap penny dreadfuls and, and dime store paperbacks and plays elemental chess, possibly by herself. But, yeah, you, uh, I'm going... I'm for personal going... discussions, you have gotten the impression that the Major's okay with her family. They're all right. She's probably a little bit worried about her younger sister because her younger sister is a, is like a couple of years younger, but she's also a void mage. But she's not like a she's not like a a explosive talent. So she's probably concerned that like the army's going to be like, "Hey, you're related to this other really cool void mage we know. Can you blow people up with lightning bolts?" And her sister really can't. So yeah, because that's the other thing. The other aspect of void mages is they're usually sensory. Yes, too, right? uh, they make great night mages and spotters. You know, basically. Yeah. You can use sensory spells and void spells to basically be like radar. I think even the the example void mage stat block is like aether sense night vision. Like they only have like stun rounds and maybe shocking touch, and then everything. The other couple of spells are both sensory. So yeah, they're like, uh, and that was technically her. What the major was supposed to be before she got to build her own unit was she was she was trained in a recon. And in fact, she was doing forward recon training when the thing happened that she told you the story where she got ambushed by a whole squad of guys and made ace in a day. Because the Scythians are also really known for their night fighters. They're literal night witches. Uh, But yeah, so I don't know about the major's personal preferences, but uh, yeah, basically there's there's some polite conversation. There's some discussion. Um, In public, the colonel alludes to some of the stuff she's working on. Like, she's like, yeah, we're working on uh, constructs, binding enchantments, and, and stuff. We've tried to build some engineering. Um, and th- then she also probably casually mentions, like, also I'm a prosthetic specialist, so if you have any, if you have any men down here who are injured, you know, we can, we can work out some, some stuff. I've got some very uh, fine quality works on board. And I don't, th- I don't think we've, you guys have experienced any serious injuries enough that anybody's taken, like, the equivalent of a high-level crit. Like, your guys have taken a couple glancing shots. They've taken some shrapnel, you know, some environmental damage. But nobody's been super seriously injured. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the the most quote-unquote casualties that were down for a while is, like, during the airbase raid, you had, like, three or four guys who took some flak shrapnel and were done for the day, basically. Yeah. But they lived. Well, so no, nobody's nobody's been, like, hit by high explosives or, you know, machine guns or anything. And luckily, being flying mages, you're actually in pretty sanitary conditions. You're not, like, down in water and dirt and anything. So, so yeah, long as you can horrible. recover a guy and fly him home, it's not like he's going to get septic. Yeah. Thank God we're not in warfare. No. Which, we, you you we, probably we, have, when, you know, talking about serious injuries, you maybe have some PTSD flashbacks about some guys you know, like, my arm, my arm. You know, as, as I mean, the, like, considering Wolfgang, like, even though Arbor Wolfgang, he has, like, Probably, like, if it wasn't for magic, he'd probably literally be covered with scars, and actually, no, he probably is covered with scars, because I never actually, like, fully heal myself. I just, like, get enough to close the wound, and I let the less hand. So, yeah, no, Wolfgang is probably covered in scars, bullet holes, um... Yeah, yeah, I think we actually talked about this last time, because you had to take your armor off, so you were basically in your in your undershirt. So, yeah, no, yeah. You're, you're covered in some... You've got a couple of stab wounds, you've got a couple of bullet holes that aren't, you know... 
they're not real gnarly or anything because your healing has been assisted by magic, but yeah. you do heal a lot naturally. Still so still visible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, n- so, now yeah. you're going to have some really sick burn scars on probably, like, your forearms and shoulders and stuff. Yeah. I'm going to be looking like Vash's Stampede here soon enough. Oh. You, as we've discussed, you can, you actually get beat up a decent amount. Yeah. You haven't taken a lot of critical damage, so mostly it's flesh wounds. So, yeah, you're 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 scarred up. Haha, <laughs> sweet. Chick's dick scars. I'll be... I'll, if you know, if 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 in the in the nineteen twenties version you want of this game, you want to go to a bar and be like, "Hey, ladies, I got this scar here." Oh, that was when an asshole with a bayonet uh, tried to stab me. I mean, I literally have Chimera Slayer, so I can get, get a bonus. Yes, no, you can't tell the story because you do. We we did discuss that. You do have scars from that. You've got a row of like four very large claw pinpricks in one of your thighs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't remember which leg it was off the top of my head, but it's. You, that was through our, that wasn't as badass as your armor is now, but that was through your armor. You took a couple mm-hmm. wounds and it was like, ooh. Oh wait, no. Like, that's snake. That's I right. Get... It's a snake. It wasn't claws, it was a snake bite. It got you with a snake tail. Oh yeah, that's right. So you you have, you know, like, oh, two, God, Venom. two concentric pairs of, of of snake fang marks on either side of one of your thighs. And it's like, oh yeah, that's where a where a freaking chimera bit me, and then I killed it. Then I show up my sweet tooth necklace. Uh, but all right. So you go back to rest. Yeah, I'm gonna go nothing. Down. Nothing of detail is discussed. The the major and the major general are probably going to have a late night meeting with the colonel about disposition of forces. Uh, you don't have to worry about that for your mission though, because uh, you're going to be flying. And as she noted to you, the Panzer guys don't fly. Nope. They have to be flown or carried somewhere. Uh. Honestly, you haven't seen them do it, but you can probably take a guess that they they could probably sprint freakishly fast, but that's still, you know, running speed, not yeah. driving or flying speed. I mean, if we weren't doing bombing runs, I could say, hey, let's just give them fucking parachutes and toss them outside the fucking bomber, but we're not, they, that's not our game plan, be right? like it, but Oh, yeah, no. So, I'd be like, yeah, unnatural body, their, their base movement and jump height is doubled, so. Yeah. They, they uh, sprint freakishly fast. They're uh, they're uh, as you might think, they're uh, they're Ulrich fast. Oh God, uh, that's terrible. He's he's probably still a little bit faster than them overall, but they have like agility thirty, and then their base move is doubled, so their default base move is six without any other special uh. effects like your. I'm gonna make you go faster in the first couple rounds. All right, mine is usually six. Yeah, so they are literally your fast. Oh. And they can double jump height, and they can climb sheer surfaces at no penalty, and their strength mod is doubled. And she has, what, <sighs> several hundred of these? Uh, s- I think we... Let's, hold on, let me actually look up. I forgot, like, the actual numbers of how many she brought. Let me double check it, because we looked this was up. It, or was so. it, like, like was it, like, dozens? Yeah, it was dozens. I think I think I said it was a company, uh, which, by default, is between 80 to 150 guys, so I was leaning more towards probably, like, 150. Like... A significant yeah. number of them, but not enough to win the whole goddamn war by themselves, right? Uh, I mean, that's... Like, they're literal fucking shock troopers. Literally. Yeah, no, they are They are designed for sp- special missions in which you need more... You need more bodies who are worth more, but they are they are a tactical asset, not a strategic one. Uh, and also, uh, just to remind the audience and the players, they also have uh, the special ability Ghostly Silent, so they are completely silent all the time. They have a plus 20 bonus on athletic tests to move silently. Oh, God. So they, they, when they sprint at you with their freaky glowing eyes, they do so in complete silence. <laughs> except for some environmental noises. Uh, Alright, so we've been going for about two hours. Let's, uh, let's probably do some final setup stuff in the next session, whenever that is. Uh, which will probably have to be again sometime this week, maybe depending on how stuff works out. Because I got stuff on the weekend. Uh, I mean, like, as or said, it I can be we can just wait until next week. Like as like I said, I got like I'm gonna be. Uh, well, we can talk about that off mic. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure out if we have to do any additional scheduling. We can just wait until early next week, naturally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's do some right. final wrap up stuff. So, um, I assume you're gonna ask for long term care. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want the corpsman to do it, or would you prefer one of your recovery unit do it? Uh, I'll let the corpsman take care of it. All right, Martha, if you would be so kind to roll for Raf, uh, his medication. 
And if he has okay. any bonuses for long-term care, which he might for tools and stuff. Let me see here. Long-term. <sighs> That's the... Yeah, I was thinking about maybe, maybe we would start tonight, but I figure this is a good point. It's just power, power up before the mission, and then the next time we'll just be, okay, you're doing the mission. Like, again, I like these... Um, you know, it's like a little bit of investigation, you know, some social... Oh, no, we we did a lot of world building and, like, figuring out relationships and stuff. Yeah. Which is fine. Hmm, I'm just we have accomplished my primary goal for this session, which is to make sure you actually got off the goddamn Zeppelin. Yep. See here now. And like I said, we're not we're not in danger of running over time, but we clearly don't have enough time to actually do the whole mission, so I figure we'll just I make sure we get all prep out of the way. Okay, I don't think I have anything that gives him bonuses. I don't think. Let me just check his quirks. Or any other talents that he has. No. So. Alright, so no, there's not any other. As far as I know, there's not. If he doesn't have it listed as like a. a quirk or a talent. There's not any additional stuff for that. Okay. Any automatically provides long-term care to a soldier, so that's just me. Yep. Actually, no. Uh, huh. I for- I just realized this because it's not hyphenated. Does he have a surgeon's tools? Uh, yes, he does. Uh, let- okay, surgeon's tools yeah. is a plus 10 to medications test to apply long-term care. Okay. Plus 10. Okay. And then he has steady hand, so that's not a plus 10. And if he had a We're surgical, gonna... if he had a roll of surgical tape, he could add a plus 5. He does have a roll of surgical tape. Do you want to use some of the surgical tape on this guy? Sure. Like, let's let's make sure that these wounds are not going to open up any time. You might not be able to move No, because honestly, he would probably put the lead out as far as medical supplies are concerned, because you, you guys are on a, on like one or two more days of turnaround time. Yeah. So he's like, you're going to do something dumb and dangerous again, Captain. You need to be fixed. <laughs> it's true. All right. So that means you are successful in long term uh, long term care. So you heal double your toughness mod for basically a day of rest. And then you get plus one for your metal, the bleeding yep, heart. So. so you heal seven. Yep. And so you be- you basically have to take the whole day off and actually rest. Uh, now, you do have a companion, though, and a whole bunch of NPCs working for you, so if you have anything you need to cover in prep time, like if there's any gear you want to get done, any mods you want to make sure you buy and install. Now oh. now is your time for your shopping list. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, to, to remind everybody, because it's been a while, the plan is basically, uh, you've got a series of targets kind of in a row, you're going to, uh... Hit the coastal fort first and try and disable some of their anti-air guns, because um, that's the first thing. So basically, you're going to do that so your bombers don't get shot down. Uh, then you're going to kind of move down down the bay, down the coast, through the warehouses and the uh, office buildings to the runway and basically take out any searchlights, any air guns, and any comms antennas you find as the advance party. Yep. So you'll need to figure out how many guys you want in the advance party. Uh, and yeah. then after that, the main body of your force, the heavies and the bombers will move in and will basically uh, st- strike any and all targets of opportunity. It's a it's all legitimate military targets, so basically they're going they're firing for effect. Yeah, and are just gonna pound them down uh, and try to you know destroy. I believe you prioritized supplies first, runway second, and buildings last, but. They're ge- they're in geographically different areas, so they may have to they may have to play with that as far as their ammo goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the recovery unit will be kind of high, high and dry in reserve to you know make sure to secure any units or anybody. You probably got some some of them. I think buddy riding with the bombers for any on site repairs. Yep. yep. But they won't be actively engaging targets. They will be defending and securing. Yep. And the only other thing is you have decided you're going to do it in the dead of night because you are. And you know, based on the weather reports, that the... And also, because you did a divination, you're looking at limited visibility. There will be, uh, you know, deck, deck level and up fog. I'm trying to think of anything there is. I... I... Uh, 
you guys can probably go for mission equipment for if you guys want to personally carry bomb racks because those aren't part of your default kit. That would count as mission equipment. So you right. don't necessarily have to go out of your way to buy any. If you want to make sure you buy any special bombs, that might be good. Is there any other special yeah, ammo you uh, need to catch up on? Uh, no, I've caught up on my, my AP round. Oh, wait, no. Shit, I, I shoot? No, I didn't. I charge. Because that's how I do. No, you did not fire a single bullet last last session. <laughs> no bullets. Well, I fired bullets that You fired weren't. a rifle grenade. I fired yeah, a but he gets grenade, three so... rifle grenades per mission, I think. No, I think it's four now. No, it's four, right. Yeah, he gets four. They're like, he's really good. This soldier's really good with these. Give him loads. It's <laughs> like, I don't use that many. I think I only oh, use, you. like, one rifle grenade. Uh, I think you used two last time because you... They actually dodged the area, well, so some of them didn't get creamed. I think one time was like or, close around, the other time. Oh yeah, no, actually that's right. Me. You were like, you fired the blank, and then it was like, okay, you can either you could have taken an action to like load another rifle grenade, but you decided to just do explosive instead. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna sign um, bomb racks to uh, mission equipment, and I gotta actually check to see if what kind of soldiers get. Uh, the default is basically frag type, you know, shrapnel and explosive. Uh, you can get flechettes, which are anti personnel. You can get incendiaries, <laughs> fire ones. Uh, you could get f- you could get some flit, which are labeled flares, to basically illuminate the target. Uh, you're not gonna get smoke; that's useless. You're not gonna get gas because you're against that sort of thing, and they aren't aquatic targets, so there's not many torpedoes. So basically, it's like, do you want? Do you want some uh, additional effects, and like incendiary or flare? Like I said, if we're taking down buildings. Incendiary might help, but I don't know. Uh, so stats wise, incendiary adds flame, so targets can catch on fire, and it uh has uh slightly better damage, but slightly worse piercing, which probably isn't a big deal because warehouses don't have a lot of armor anyway. Uh. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to do that because they would lose blast if you bought flechette. Yeah. I don't. Well, as I said, I'm not particularly going for anti person. No, it's yeah. The 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 flechette bombs are really nasty if you're an individual dude. Like you're <laughs> you're instead of dropping a gren- a bomb or a grenade, you're you're dropping like a foot long metal spike from a from a height. It really sucks for the guy that you hit. It doesn't really do anything else past that. It does still have anti-material, so it can like disable individual vehicles too. But again, you're you're going for area targets, fire for effect. I think both of you guys can do explosive rounds of ammo too. Yeah, yeah. Like I said the the plan is like for any targets like on on the exit, we're gonna try parting shots <clears throat> to take out things that maybe have not been the, um, fully destroyed. Or yeah, basically, you're gonna destroyed. have an advanced team to soften up the air defenses. You're gonna have the primary. You're going to do a single primary bombing run and hit all the targets, and then you're going to have... I think you decided you would... You know, you're going to ask for volunteers, and then everybody volunteered, so you had to pick them anyway. Yeah. Um, but the advanced team is also the reserve team, so uh, f- are you guys both vanguards now? Or just or is it just yes. Ulrich still? Okay, you're both vanguards, so yeah. So yeah. it's a classic vanguard t- squad, first in, last out. You will um, enter first to weaken the air defenses, like I said, and then you will leave last to make sure there's no lingering targets of opportunity. And there's no pursuit. Yeah. And there may or may um, not be giant ships in harbor, but hopefully with no <laughs> visibility, they're not going to be able to hit you. Yeah. Um, yeah and I think so, that also means you decided that the, the sub should stay in reserve because yeah. there's not much they can do anyway. Yeah, well, also, we I think you mentioned that we're not fully stocked up on, like, sub equipment, so I kind of want to spare our resources. Yeah, you guys don't have any like spare subunits or anything like that, so they're they're limited to what they brought with them. Mm-hmm. Actually, which I think was the concern was basically like you guys are going to have a huge pain in the ass time if you have to fish a submage out of the water with your own recovery guys. Yeah, it's gonna suck. It's gonna be night. It's gonna be dark, and you're not gonna have the spare equipment. So you're that would basically mean that you would have to pull that guy out of the water and either carry him with you home or try and drop him off on the sub in the dark. So, yeah, you're going to hold them in reserve just in case. Uh, Like, for instance, if you got naval pursuit, if, like, you know, because you're, no matter how Billy Badass you are, um, on your own, 12 of you probably can't 
actually stop the Victorious or another large class ship if it was like, we're going to go out of this harbor at full steam after those assholes. Um, like, you could probably slow right. them down, but with some sabotage, but you would not be able to necessarily sink that ship. We talked about that before. Yeah, like, we would have to, it would actually have to be, like, kind of a set piece battle where we actually have to do a boarding action. Yes, you would have to, like, get on board and be like, okay, we're going to have a shootout in the bridge so nobody can control anything, or we're going to attack the rudders so they can't steer kind of stuff. Yeah, but that, as I said, that sounds like a big action set. set. So, you're, you, in that case, having the sub in reserve to, like, intercept pursuers along the coast would be a good idea. Because you're, they would be able to at least put torpedoes where they matter and probably, you know, do some mm-hmm. do some below the waterline damage at least and like slow them down, disable them, make them change tactics, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So bombs or mission equipment? Yeah, I think we're. I think I'm a, like me personally. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Cendier. I don't know. If I'm All right, um, that's fair. It's gonna be uh low down. What's your what's your uh what's your, uh, what's your team logistics right now? down. I heck and wrote it down. I know you did. Just did I write it down? It's there it is. It's 40. Alright. Uh, do you want to roll uh, now or next session? Uh, let's roll next session. Okay, we'll like roll before time. you begin. So That will mean you have less time to compensate if something fucks up, but... Yeah, so bomb racks. I'll we'll go with incendiary. Uh, or if you go with what you feel is best. Uh, this is World uh, War 1, man. You can still have your personal flavor. Right. Well, yeah, basically the the goal is that Wolfgang, the captain, will be like, okay, quartermaster, I my advanced squad, which includes myself, is in, in need of bomb racks, un, which is unusual for us, I know. So send me out some bomb racks and send me out some, some fire bombs. And then the logistics rule is the question of, does the quartermaster find all the bomb racks and fire bombs and any other ammo? Or does he accidentally send you a crate of... Something else dumb like you've gotten before. Like, uh, you know, cans I mean, of coffee. Anti- I think we have, like, an anti-tank lance. Here. You do. You do have yes. one anti-tank lance and, like, a, f- <laughs> a handful do. of reloads for it. <laughs> do we even want to use that? Nah, not for building. Nah, it's freaking heavy, too. Yeah. Like, like honestly, yeah, fuck, we might just get, like, I might just get, fuck. I'll just, I'll I'll just go and go with the regular bombs. Yeah, that's fair. They have uh, honestly, the anti-tank lens would be pretty experimental. So you could be like, "Hey, found this in my in my what, back what, room." Actually, what was it that we 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 asked for when we got that anti-tank lens? I have no earthly idea. It was something was it? missiony. It was probably something like probably some kind of sensor equipment or something. Oh, I think it was camo netting. Oh yeah, that was it. It was the cami netting. And so, like, here, have some camo netting. It's like. It's an anti-tank lens. So according to the paperwork, it's camo netting. Uh, yes, according to <laughs> according to the to the the paperwork on it, you know, according to the shipping label. Oh, yes. <laughs> that happens a lot when you guys roll camouflage. <laughs> well, I think it was another time where we before we did the full logistics system where you guys oh, rolled was and you another got thing. One was just like grenades. <laughs> you got I think you got winter camo one time instead of the woodland you wanted or the desert and you're like the fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, anti. Why do we have this? Six six point two five kg. That is yeah. heavy and it's inaccurate. Yeah, well, honestly, like yeah, no, I mean, rifle, it's it's like, a it's an experimental bazooka prototype. Like the yes, re- recoilless rifles weren't d- normally developed in this war. Three D ten plus five piercing ten. Oh jeez. No, it's yeah, uh, it is it is for vehicles and for uh, and for, for wolf gangs. <laughs> it's it's for vehicles and wolf gangs. Ten meters to sixty meters. Yeah, no. Yep. Hey, welcome to w- welcome to dumbfire recoilless weapons. They're not great. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, I don't think we're gonna use this. So I will like when I have a moment, I'll just ship it over to the Grim. So I'll, like, hey, um, we got this equipment. Um, we can't really use it, so here, have, like, six, uh, I think it was, like, six. Yeah, it's, like, six like, reloads, so it's it's fully loaded and has six spare shells. Yeah, have this camo netting. Alright. You get, um, several, you get a number of invisible NPC brownie points. <laughs> <laughs> Which, theoretically, uh, you could cash in with an NPC for brownies. Nice. Um... Honestly, yeah, even though you, like, negotiated it, they did build the, yeah, they build, build the greenhouse, so you could be like, hey, thanks for all your hard work, guys. 
oh yeah, that's what I'm just gonna do. It's like here, have some experimental weapon that we just so happened to get our hand that fell off the back of the truck. Oh. Ah, bureaucracy. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's geez. it's very rare that it happens, but that's why I built the the additional logistics system. I kind of I know I admit I kind of stole it from other games, but like that's the reason why I put it in this was like, no, I want to capture the feel of military, which is. Sometimes dumb mistakes happen, and the paperwork says there's no mistake, thus, there's nothing wrong, officially. Deal with it. Because <laughs> that's how it works, is you don't get to take that back. Well, I guess, like, only the yeah. only thing armor-wise, I need to start working on anti-magic abilities, but I think that's Theric Ward. I don't think Because it makes me glow in the fucking dark? Yes, Etheric Ward yes. gives you penalties to, to camouflage, because you're, you're, yeah. you're Tron lit. And uh, how how like, I was being all sneaking camouflage. And uh, real talk, um, it may come to surprise that the fucking Panzer guys are ghostly silent, but even Wolfgang can be pretty fucking sneaky, even in full plate. Well, yeah, because you you d- because you are an ironclad, so you remove the penalties. Yeah, which is honestly that's kind of the inspiration for the Panzer guys. The idea is that since armor is their body. It's so natural for them to move. It doesn't like clank or clatter or anything. And they don't need to I breathe and they don't have hearts. So they make very little noise. For for the Ironclad advanced career, it's definitely like you have learned to treat the armor as an extension of your body, so you don't you don't make a weird scuffle noise or anything like that. It's my second skin. Literally. Well, it has some of your skin on it now. Yeah, we are now bonded forever. It is also powered, but yeah, so um, the other One thing you I could do like- to, to be anti-magic would be to, you'd probably have to rebuild the whole thing, but you could rebuild it out of dragon bone, but that would be yeah. very expensive and has other penalties yeah. because dragon bone is resistant to magic, period, even beneficial magic. Yeah, so I think it'd be best for me to get, I need to get like mirror force or, I think mirror force is the best. Yeah, though. mirror force is the, is the, you can spend a response action to bounce spells back. Yeah. Well, not even necessarily bounce them back, but just like, okay, I'm going to not only not be hit by that spell, but I'm going to pick a different target, which could be the person <laughs> who shot it at me, if they're in range. Yeah, so I might have... How is this? Oh, you're probably going to get a couple from it. Mages of War. Troll F. Gotta be honest, there's a, lot, there's a lot worse things you could get in the, uh, in the, the logistic shuffle. Like, the Occupied Coffin. The what? Oh. No, you can roll and get an Occupied Coffin. It's a it's a wooden coffin which if you actually open it is filled with grave dirt and has a skeleton in it. Woo! Let's see here. I need needle shower and hellion, sh- which is five fifth, and then mirror force four hundred. So nine hundred and fifty. Okay. Actually, I might just whatever experience we get today, I might just throw on needle shower. Yeah. So okay, that's my ideas. So yeah. Like, equipment-wise, I think I'm pretty set. I'm trying to avoid carrying everything I might need for any situation, because I was doing, actually, uh, math on my gear score. I'm at, uh, at my gear weight. I'm at, um, as I am right now with my current gear, I'm carrying 53.87 kilograms out of of 78. So I am carrying more than two-thirds of max. Yep, Um, load on it. Yep, so I'm... Trying to not, I said, with the bomb racks and bombs, too, that's going to be a dish. Actually, what do I carry on? I got four Ethereum cores, 12 pounds by itself. Thanks. Battle dressing, field, wait, field glasses are on my belt. Yeah. And you bomb well, rack, my- nine kilos. Yeah. Well, Though, keep in mind, that's, people. that's you know, that's two, basically two racks, one on each leg, loaded with bombs, so. Mess kit, rescue hook, spare reload. Survival rush, risk watch, wearable radio. Extra things I carry on me are an horoscope, bell pouches filled with a gas, field medicine, flares, and adrenaline shot, stimulants, spare AP ammo reload, oil lamp, uh, light source, good yo. Multi tool, a pin and pad set, pack rigging, magical ball bearings, chalk, engine grease, iron thinner, my pouch of root gems, a bag of salt, wax candles. Other stuff I carry along. Uniform uh, is my backpack, chainmail, my Chimera charm necklace, a gold pocket watch, other gloves, major, Nvidia's dog tag. I have a bunch of other. Accounts. 
stuff, but that's stuff that I leave at home. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm actually, I think that's, that's pretty solid. That's a pretty solid gear list. You own lots of things. Okay. Yeah, I do. All right, so basically, I, the, uh, I think Wolfgang's figured out anything he wants. So, Ulrich, is there yeah. anything you want to acquire beforehand, before the mission? Or are you good? You've got your jar of dirt. Other than having the bomb axe. <laughs> no, he's going to cover the bomb axe next time, yeah. Yeah, not. I don't think there's anything I need exactly. Okay, um, I don't think there's anything you guys need to roll or anything, because you've already talked to the. You've, you've done all the training you need to do, and we already discussed that you. Got everybody together and did all the planning. That was a couple sessions ago. I think that was, you know, 23.5. Right, right. yo. So, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and call the session there. Uh, let's see. What's a good XP number? Uh, oh. What did I give you guys last time? I think it was I like 300. Know. It's 300. All right, I'll give you another 300 then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, let's see. I don't want it to be more than I gave last time because you didn't, you didn't fight anybody. There was no life or death. But you also did a lot of stuff. You did a lot of talking to people and kind of figuring shit out, so let's call it three hundred. I'm not I'm not in any I'm not in any need to hold back your XP's. Okay, As I'm evidenced the... by the fact that despite how many fuck tons of XP he has, I still nearly blew up Wolfgang last time. So Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna get shocking touch and lightning bolt. Oh, nice. That might actually that might actually be relevant for reasons. <laughs> Plus I have the one of those reaches that Sends my spell range, so at least it's not short range. Uh, <laughs> I will say, up. I mean, mechanically speaking, uh, we did. First of all, obviously, that means you counter poison, but also, uh, we did mention that it would be a possible negative spiritual influence. It was a thing actually discussed last time with the Colonel that one of the things that demons don't like is pure void. Ah. So, metal effect gonna pick up Needle Shower and Hellion Chains. Right, uh, cool. Those are also actually really useful, uh, especially for for Wolfgang, who occasionally likes to take people alive. You will probably get an appreciation for Hellion Chains. Yeah. And now I have a wait. Is Needle Shower a cone? No, it's. I thought it was. Okay, I think I rewrote so... that it's not because that didn't. Oh, really... it's an o- it's an auto fire. Yeah, it's auto fire is, is the thing it does. It's one d. D-... The damage is very swingy. It's one d ten with no mods, but it has a pen of ten and it's auto fire. So every DOS is an additional hit. Um, and it has a oh. special rule, which is instead of hitting the original target, you can apply those extra hits to targets within one meter. So it's a it's a semi cone effect. Yeah, that's why I was probably. I think it used to be cone, but then I rewrote it to make more sense. Yeah. So basically, you throw a shitload of needles at people, and it's it's very flexible whether or not it will do a lot of wounds to them, but it will almost assuredly pierce any armor they're wearing, and you can hit a lot. Uh, and then Hellion Chains is. You know, you do the spellcasting action. If you succeed, uh, you can grapple a target within DOS and meters. If they're hit by it, because it counts as an attack, so they get a dodge type thing or whatever, they're immobilized and can't take any actions until they're freed. That's not grammatically correct. Thank you, Google. And uh, so they either have to make a minus 20 agility test to wiggle out, or they can break the chain. Or somebody can break the chain anyway. Uh, And then as a half action, you can constrict them, which is basically like strangulating them. Or you can move them, uh, you can pull them closer to you by a number of meters equal to your will mod. So you can, in fact, shout, get over here. Do you have steel skin yet? Nope. Okay. I'll probably be picking that. I might I might make a beeline to finish out metal, honestly. There's a lot of fun stuff there. I think you already have Iron Fist, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you could pick up steel I skin. I can literally which would, knife hand. It, it can double your toughness mod for uh, damage reduction for a number of rounds. But you might find I might, helpful. I wonder what happens if I layer steel skin on top of part of fire. Uh, they're both separate sources of DM, but that means you'd get your heart of fire is plus five because it's your will, right? Yeah, that's plus five, and then steel skin gives you another three because it's double your toughness mod. So that's eight total extra toughness type damage resistance. Pretty, pretty raw. Uh, and then you can high levels. So then there's we've already talked about mirror force. There's also mind of steel, which is just the uh. The I am spiritually metal. You're immune to you're immune to critical damage and fear tests. You have a plus thirty to oppose social rolls, resist falling unconscious, knock back or stun for a number of rounds. Uh, and during this time, you don't suffer a lot of penalties, and uh, you don't begin dying at zero wounds and continue to function, even though you're below zero wounds. But if you're below zero wounds when it ends, you must immediately make a toughness test to avoid dying. But yeah, that's the that's the fuck you. I'm not stopping skill. Will probably be pretty useful going. 
And then you're basically after that, you've got your capstones. You've got iron gates, which is, yeah, I'm just going to summon some giant blocks of cover, possibly as a response action. And then rain of swords. Uh, what's the area range? Yeah, it's, that's will in meters, an area equal to your will mod. So f- f- a five meter square within 50 meters of you for right now, which is an auto fire attack. I should capitalize that. No, Discord's freak. Uh, not Discord. Google's freaking out. All right. Anyway, we'll uh, end the session there. You guys are spending your XP. Yeah. We'll talk more about what you spent your XP on next time. I don't think we. You were saving it anyway, uh, Lucky. So I don't think it mattered too much. I don't know if or spent it on anything, but we'll discuss XP expenditures next time. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and all that stuff. And we'll see you next session.